so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established amongst us all. Amen. Manningham City Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land we now know as Manningham. We pay our respects to Wurundjeri elders past and present and value the ongoing contribution to the cultural heritage of Manningham. Council would also like to acknowledge the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. I welcome all members of the public here tonight to this council meeting who have come along to observe proceedings. I'd like to advise those present that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event that your voice and or image is broadcast. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. All right. All council meetings are governed by a meeting procedure local law. I will introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda, calling it by number and by reading the title. I will then call for a mover and a seconder of a motion on the item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate on an item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions. I'd like to draw your attention to item seven on tonight's agenda, public questions, which provides people with an opportunity to ask questions of the council. Questions must be registered prior to the commencement of the meeting to be asked. If we do not have the information to hand to provide a meaningful response, the question may be taken on notice and a response provided in writing. I'd like to stress that I will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit the, these additional questions in writing to Council through the normal channels. Item number two on the agenda, apologies and requests for leave of absence. There are no apologies. Item number three, prior notification of conflict of interest. I'd like to advise that I have made two written disclosures of conflict of interest for tonight's meeting. They relate to item number 9.1 concerning planning application PLN 18 0635 at 23 to 29 Parker Street, Templestowe Lower, the interest being an indirect interest due to close association. and. Item number 9.3 concerning planning application PLN 18 slash 0304 at 15 Glendale Avenue, Templestowe, the interest being an indirect interest due to close association. Are there any other notifications of conflict of interest? No, thank you. Item number four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? Councillor Galbally. Yes, Madam Mayor, I move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting of Council held on 23rd of April 2019 be confirmed. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Zephyropoulos, thank you. Would the mover like to speak? No, nothing to just... Okay, I'll, see, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item number five, presentations. <coughs> 5.1, condolence motion, Mr. Murray John McMahon. It is with sadness that I inform you of the recent passing of Mr. Murray John McMahon on the 16th of April 2019. Mr. McMahon was a long-standing resident of Warrandyte who was an active and passionate advocate for his local community. Mr. McMahon made a significant contribution to Warrandyte as the founder and chairman of Information Warrandyte and also served on the Board of Community Information and Support Victoria. Our sympathies are extended to Mr. McMahon's family at this very difficult time. Item number six, petitions. Item number 6.1, petitions. Smoking outside restaurants at Macedon Plaza Templestowe Lower, Heidi Ward. Do I have a mover? 
Moved, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gough. Do I would Councillor Gough, would you like to read the motion? I'll move that uh, this petition, but Madam Mayor, it looks like a joint letter rather than a petition, but I will table it in, as well. But uh, this looks as if it is a joint letter and it is a photo it's a photocopy of, of something and and uh, I just think here it's not a petition, it's it's a letter and it's signed by all of these people. So that's called a joint letter. So I would uh, I wish to table this uh, joint letter uh, with regard to um, smoking in Macedon Plaza and uh, refer it to officers for a report back to council. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kleinert. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item number seven, which is public question time. We've received a number of questions tonight. In the, um, and the, our first question is from Mr. D um, is from Mr. David Del Monaco from the Veneto Club and the Bulleen Lions Football Club. Mr. Del Monaco, could you please come to the microphone? Thank you. Mr. Demonico, you have two minutes uh, to make a brief introductory statement before asking your questions. Okay. Thank you. Mia. Thank you. Um, I am the sports manager of um, the Venza Club, as well as the acting chairperson for MPL team FC Bowling Lions. <coughs> we are currently located at the Venza Club and in the nearby Bowling Park. We've been closely uh, following the developments regarding the North East Link Road. Um, but we are very concerned that various authorities apparently propose potential restrictions on redeveloping. Um, within the floodplain along the Yarra River precinct and Bulleen precinct, and so um, which may prohibit current use as well as future uses. Is Council aware of this? And if so, uh, what will we do to make sure that the North East Link Authority, Melbourne Water, any other agencies um, support solutions developing in the floodplains so that sporting uses can be protected? Thank you, Mr. Delmonico. I'm going to direct that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr. Angelo Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, through you. Uh, David, thanks for your question. Um, <coughs> Council is aware of, of the plan that you mentioned and we are actively uh, investigating opportunities to maximise uh, land uh, for active recreation in accordance with the plan that Council has endorsed, the Yarra River concept plan. We're doing that with all key stakeholders, including Melbourne Water. Um, the, the draft plan that you referred to, as we see, it does actually provide for, for new active recreation areas on sites along Bulleen Road and Templestow Road, which is consistent with Council's concept plan. But having said that, we will be making a submission to that draft um, plan to that independent panel process to make sure that we reinforce Council's position and concept plan. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr John Biondo on behalf of Templestowe United Football Club. two minutes to put a brief introductory statement before putting your question. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I am the secretary of the Temple State United Football Club, which uh, housed and at uh, Bulleen Park on the two pitches behind the Arrow Junior Football League. I'm wanting to ask Council a North East Link related question on behalf of the club. First, firstly, I want to congratulate uh, the Council for pushing the Bulleen driving range to become a key North East Link relocation site in dealing with soccer fields and facility losses from the freeway. We also understand Council are working on training pitches and other opportunities from the Yarra Valley Country Club, uh, the land gift proposal there. However, we're really concerned that the draft bullying precinct framework plan wants to stop balanced development within areas that may flood or, or nearby to deliver Council's proposed soccer facilities and pitches. 
Will Council continue strongly to advocate for balanced development within areas that may flood or nearby so offsets and upgrades to facilities lost by the North East Link project can occur in the future? Thank you, Mr Biondo. I'm going to direct that question again to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr Angelo Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you. Uh, John, thanks for your question. Um, looks, as I said in the previous response to, to David, it's a similar question. Um, we believe the plan that has been released is generally consistent with Council's concept plan uh, to provide for more active recreation um, in those locations. Um, but as I said earlier, we will be making a submission to reinforce that. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr Biondo, I just want to echo those comments as well, because there seems to be a belief amongst the community that the Bulleen Precinct Framework Plan is prohibiting uh, the development of playing fields and of, say, for instance, sporting, sporting pavilions in the uh, floodplains. But our officers are of the view that that plan, that, that that framework plan doesn't prohibit it. And I can assure you that as a council and as a councillor of nine as well, we are advocating strongly uh, with the state government and with the North East Link project that these lands must and should be developed into uh, sporting facilities, recreational lands and sporting pavilions for our community and really when you look at a $15.8 billion project to, to enhance this land, if they can put a tunnel underneath a river, they can put soccer pitches next to it. And that's what we'll be advocating Thank on you. behalf of our community, Mr Biondo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, we, now, we have um, questions as well from Mr Tim Murray, the CEO of the Yarra Junior Football League. If you could uh, come to the microphone, please, Mr Murray. So, Mr Murray, again, you have two minutes, if you wish, to use as for an introductory statement before asking your questions. Thank you, Madam Mayor and councillors. Uh, my name is Tim Murray and I'm the CEO of the Yarra Junior Football League. We have 11,200 players, approximately 1,800 in Manningham and 2,600 girls or so, 500 of which are in Man Manningham. We're currently located at Bulleen Park and have offices, facilities and football grounds located there for eight full-time staff, including an AFL staff member, and 12 part-time staff. We're the AFL-affiliated organisation representing Manningham's junior football clubs. We're impressed that the Council adopted a cohesive vision in its February Council <coughs> meeting to provide for football and other sporting needs across Bulleen, being hit by North East Link. And Council have made an attempt, uh, which we really support, to deal with the loss of flat open space and sporting facilities in Manningham from the North East Link project. However, we're seeking urgent clarification from Council on two questions about the North East Link project. Uh, and I would make the point that our questions have the full support of AFL Victoria in, 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 uh, tonight. Uh, is Council aware the North East Link Authority now proposed to relocate the Yarra Junior Football League out of Bulleen Park and move us to Ivanhoe? Because this is so far for many of our clubs, two thirds of whom are south of the river, does Manningham Council realise that this would likely contribute to the fragmentation and, and break up of our entire league and be a major loss to the kids and families of Manningham? And secondly, uh, will Council be prepared to work closely with us and the Manningham soccer community, including the Veneto Club and FC Bulleen Lions and Templestowe United, who have, uh, from our discussions, similar objectives to us to achieve our relocation site and their goals and urgently push and work together to push the state government <coughs> to secure Manningham's vision and the football and soccer community's vision for Bulleen to transform it into a sports and recreation driven precinct. Thank you Mr Murray. I'll direct your questions to the Director of City Planning and Community Mr Angelo Corumbus. Oh, thank you Madam Mayor. Again through you. Um, hi Tim, thanks for your Hello, questions. Um, in response to your first question, yeah, look, yes, we are aware of the proposed relocation, that, that option of your league to potential locations in the city of uh, Banyal, either as sort of temporary or permanent um, 
uh, relocations. Um, and I should flag um, Tim and I met earlier today and had a conversation about this. Um, I note you've, you're obviously aware that um, council officers uh, and and the mayor, in fact, uh, met with all um, relevant clubs uh, very re recently, yesterday, in fact. Um, so, as, as discussed, we're working with NALP uh, and with Banyal Council on the possible options, and we're aware of the implications on the league, as you've outlined, and, and your preferences. Uh, but we'll continue to work with you and the others. In response to your second question, um, uh, yes, we are actively working with all the sporting clubs affected by the project in line with Council's Yarra River concept plan. Um, and as you know, we, we've had meetings, as I said a moment ago, with all the relevant clubs recently to help inform a bit more detailed master planning for Bulleen Park and other identified sites. And Council's aim, consistent with that concept plan, is to accommodate affected soccer facilities in the new site on Templestowe Road, being the old golf driving range. And we're working closely with NELP at the state government to seek the best possible outcome for all affected clubs and the city's future recreation needs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Corumbus. And I'd just like to add that, um, yes, Mr Murray, you and I did meet for an hour and a half yesterday and you informed me that you you uh, formed the view that the North East Link Authority is seeking to move you, uh, the, the YJFL, to Ford Park. And so, uh, but that, I understand that wasn't in writing, that was just a discussion that you had, that you feel didn't go very well. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Madam yeah. Mayor. None of our communication with North East Link is followed up with a written correspondence. All right, so you don't, you're not, you don't yet have anything in writing? Uh, we don't have anything in writing yeah. from North East Link about okay. anything, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr Murray. Thank, thank you, Madam you. Mayor. Okay. Um, Madam Mayor, I have had um, Peter Ruddick, who has motor neuron disease, ask me to read out his question, but maybe we could do it um, at the end of the meeting. Uh, I think that would probably be more appropriate. He has a, He's unable to attend and he has a question uh, that he wants to present to Council, but if I can do it at the end of the meeting, that would probably be more appropriate. Is that correct? Councillor question time. Um, you can ask a question during councillor question time in your own right. That's in accordance with the local procedure laws. So but, if um, you, yeah, that is an option but, for this you. Is, this is a man that cannot attend. He's asked me yeah. to ask a question on his behalf who has motor neuron disease. Yeah. Well, so um, I'm just wondering whether um, or not a councillor can ask a question on behalf of a resident, I'm going to have to take that on notice for the moment. So if you'd like to take a seat and I'll proceed with the other questions from the members of the public and I'll get back to you on that one, Councillor Haynes. <coughs> okay, so... Um, in relation to the other questions, they relate to an item of which I've declared a conflict of interest, and that is the um, development at on Glendale Avenue, which is item number 9.3. So I'm going to excuse myself from the meeting, and Counts uh, Deputy Mayor Anna Chen is going to uh, take my seat and uh, direct those questions. Thank you. So, Madam Mayor has left the chamber. Now we continue our public question times. Now we have the question uh, from As Athena. Please, sorry, I can't really read your writing. Recycle from 24 Glendale Avenue. Would you please come forward to the microphone? Thank you. You have two minutes to address, uh, to make brief introduction statement and read your questions. Uh, thank, thank you for you. your time. Um, I'm here basically representing a number of residents in Temple Stowe who are continuously fighting the Manningham um, Planning Department for approvals of high density um, apartments that are being uh, uh, accepted and uh, uh, 
basically going forward in the Templestowe area. In particular, we're uh, seeking some assistance from the Manningham Council to look at whether they're going to revise some of the planning scheme in that area. The residents of Templestowe are situated on Glendale Avenue, Atkinson Street, Hakia Street, Verbena Street and Hovia Street. Um, would really like the council to reconsider rezoning um, this area uh, to at least low density. Um, the residents are constantly fighting with the planning department, as I mentioned, and uh, they're continuously approving developments unless we're submitting high volumes of objections. So we'd just like the council um, to consider rezoning this area given the high volume of objections um, that you're receiving with each and every uh, development application in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Director of City uh, of the City Planning, Mr. Colon Colrembus, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Columbus. Thank you. I'm sorry, Councillor Chen, I have a question on that matter, if I may. Yes. Um, could I ask a question? If, um, if indeed the Council were to adopt such an amendment which would in effectively reduce the zoning on the land and reduce the uh, allowable heights, um, is this the sort of amendment that is likely to be supported by the planning department and the minister, who in the end are the responsible authorities who would have to approve any amendment that council would see. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. And I then direct the real question again to Mr. Columbus. Thank you, Councillor. Um, yeah, it, for the reasons I've, I've outlined before, my advice would be that it's very unlikely we would get uh, support from the officers in DELP and then ultimately the Minister uh, himself, given the lack of strategic justification um, and compliance with state planning policy. Thank you, Mr Columbus. Now we have six question forms from 17 Glendale Avenue. According to our local law, we deal with two questions per, so per topic. So I just wondering whether those six forms can have a, represent, a, rep, a representative to ask questions. The six forms from, six, uh, from 17 Glendale Avenue. Can we have a representative, please? Yes, a, rep, uh, a res representative to come to the microphone to speak and ask two questions. Yes, thank you. Yeah, can you just come to the microphone and state your name, please? Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, my name's Ariana Raccolini, and my parents live at number 17, Glendale Avenue. I'll address one question, if that's OK, and allow um, another resident. Thank you. You have two minutes. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so there are, um, there's a proposal to build eight double-storey townhouses, um, next door to my mum and dad's house, and they're proposing to have eight, um, eight 
um, car stackers. And the council's report states that development of 15 Glendale Avenue has just one visitor car park because of Glendale Ave Avenue's proximity to public transport. Can the Ma Manningham City Council please provide the evidence to show that people use public transport to visit family and friends um, on weekends and after hours, um, you know, to, to, to visit, like, because they're only providing one visitor car park. Where's the evidence, please? Thank you for your question. I direct your question to, again, City Planning Director, Mr. Columbus. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Um, thank you, Oriana, for your question. Um, again, sorry to do this to you, but it's a similar response. The parking requirements and the, from your perspective, the lack of uh, visitor parking in locations like that is actually a state government requirement. The council has no, no capacity to, to mandate visitor parking in those locations, as, as you've said, along the principal public transport network. So that can't be a, a, a reason for council not supporting the application. Uh, as an individual reason, it would not be supported at VCAT. Thank you. Thank you. Your question is answered. Thank you. And we have another question from 17 Glendale Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Can you state your name? Andrew and then Ralph, you have two minutes. And, uh, Thank 22A you. Thank you. Glendale Avenue. Thank you for the opportunity. My question is uh, what is the Council's response to our objection to overdevelopment on a block of land of 1,323.6 square metres with eight townhouses, facilitated, I think, by an ambitious uh, plan to put in car stacking facilities, which uh, anecdotally, I believe, have a significant amount of problems in terms of perhaps uh, the use of the second facility in a car stacking situation. We strongly object to these revised plans with this facility. Currently on our southern boundary, by way of preamble, nine dwelling development is underway on 189 and 191 Foot Street. Nine and on 1,649 square metres. I question the overdevelopment of eight townhouses on 1,323.6 square metres, facilitated by this wonderful idea of car stacking. To us, the car stacking facility will lead to further on-street parking, which already is a problem, and I would suggest that uh, in future, the option of on-street parking will become the choice of the second car location. So that's my, my little, uh, if you like, scenario and I thank you for the opportunity but I do think when this uh, comes up for perhaps a signature and signing off these considerations should be taken into consideration as it is an overdevelopment on this size block of land. Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. I'll direct your question, okay? Can you, can you please stay to Mr. Sheehy and Director, uh, sorry, Manager of Planning Compliance. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you, Andrew, for your, um, your questions. In terms of your overdevelopment query, uh, the proposal satisfies planning policy in terms of both the physical and the policy context of the site. Uh, the proposal uh, satisfies the height requirements, site coverage, and the provision of private open space per each dwelling. Um, Concerning your uh, views and your concerns uh, regarding the on-street parking, um, the proposal, as mentioned previously by Mr. Crombus, satisfies the requirements of the planning scheme. However, the recently adopted um, car parking policy will preclude these dwellings from obtaining approval to park on the street in the future should it get to a stage where there is congestion that requires attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheehy. Thank you. And now I have further public question time for filled up by Andrew and Colin Rove of 22A Glendale Avenue. Since we only deal with two, top, uh, two questions per topic, so I will need to seek my fellow councillors' consent if you allow 
extra time to for for Andrew and Colin Rove to ask questions. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Now we have Andrew and Colin Rove to ask questions. Oh, uh, you again? All right, that has been answered. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, I'm going to uh, Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, the situation regarding visitor parking in this particular development, it's my recollection that the state government relatively recently, in the last year or so, put through an amendment VC 148, as I recall, which removed the requirement for developers to provide visitor car parking in precisely these sorts of development. Can the officers please confirm if that's correct and if it has impacted this site? Because clearly this is a control that we have. We can't con change this, we can't control it. We, we're just directed to apply this constraint in considering these applications. Thank you, Councillor Matlish. Can I direct your question to Mr Sheehy? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you're quite right, uh, Councillor McLeish. Uh, the uh, planning scheme amendment that was introduced by the state government last year was introduced to every planning scheme in Victoria and uh, is, uh, impacts this site, resulting in no visitor spaces having to be required. Thank you. And my, one more, Madam Mayor. So, as I understand it, uh, the parking policy that we as a council re recently implemented I think it's been now fully implemented. Again, Mr. Sheehy, thank you. Your uh, answer? No, I haven't asked, I haven't asked right. the question yet. Um, <laughs> my understanding is that we have, as a council, put a constraint on the number of parking permits that are allowable to such developments to try and preserve the on street parking for the existing residents. Uh, has that amendment been in policy been put through and will it apply here? Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Mr. Sheehy. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Councillor McLeish, for your question. Um, yes, the uh, draft policy was adopted by Council in April, and it will impact this development. So any development consisting of greater than five dwellings will be captured by the, by the policy, which will prevent <coughs> future landowners or occupiers from parking on the street should restrictions be put in place along the street. Thank you, Mr. Sheehy. Now I need to adjourn the committee for a few minutes and allow the officers to call back our Madame Mayor back to the chamber. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Chin. Um, and Councillor Haynes, in relation to your question of can you ask a question on behalf of a questioner, um, I refer you to um, our procedural um, laws, meeting laws, um, item number, th well, law 35.1 says, if a questioner is not present in the public gallery, a response will be supplied in writing. So your questioner will receive a response, a response to his question in writing. Thank so you. Question, Thank you. The so the question is, um, oh. uh, I have the question here and it's written, but he's unable to attend because of Okay, so if health. you could, if the, the question should have been handed up before the meeting. Was, was the question handed up before so, the meeting? So that's why I'm asking. No, I'll, I look, I'll, I'll accept it. I'll accept it and um, I'm... And I'll be able to do it later. Oh, no, no, okay. it'll, there'll be a response provided in writing. It's address and everything there. No yep. So I'll, ac I'll accept that. I will, <coughs> I will use my discretion and Thank accept you, it. Thank he you. He does have motor neuron disease yep. and he's um, unable to attend yep. any meetings. We understand, Councillor Haynes. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Later. As well. Oh. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, so maybe that's my piece. No, where's mine gone? All right. So um, we're now up to 
Item number eight, admission of urgent business. There are two proposed items of urgent business. In order to admit urgent business, we require a resolution from the council. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. Madam Mayor, I move that council admits for consideration the following items of urgent business at item 14 of this meeting. Item 14.1, Suburban Rail Loop Efficacy. Item, uh, item 14.2, Appointment of Authorised Officer, Planning and Environment Act, 1918. Justin Richardson. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor McLeish. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item number nine, planning permit applications. Councillors, as I've already uh, stated, I have disclosed that I have a conflict of interest in items 9.1 and 9.3, being an indirect interest due to close association. I'll be leaving the meeting room for the duration of these matters. And Deputy Mayor Anna Chen, will, will you please resume the chair in my absence? Thank you. Officers, please confirm that Madame Chair has left the chamber. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Councillors, I would like to suggest that item 9.3 be brought forward on the agenda to be considered immediately following item 9.1. Do I have a mover? Councillor Malish. So moved, Madam Mayor. Can I have a seconder? Sure. Councillor Gabberley, would the mover like to speak? No, Madam Mayor. Would the seconder like to speak? Um, I'll just read out the motion as, as it's said. That item 9.3 be brought forward and considered immediately following item 9.1 on this evening's agenda. Thank you. I put it to vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. Now we move to item 9.1, planning application PLN 180635, 23 to 29 Parker Street, Templestowe Lower, for the installation of, and use of the, uh, of the land for an additional 10 electronic gaming machines to a total of 60 machines. Do I have a mover? Madam Mayor. Councillor McLeish. Madam Mayor, I'd like to move an alternative recommendation, if I may. I move that the council adopt the offer. Sorry, I'll try that again. <laughs> I move the alternate, recommend, alternate motion number one be adopted. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Can, do I have a seconder? Councillor Zephyropoulos, would the mover like to speak? Yes, thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Councillors, I am rising to speak here uh, to an alternate motion, and that alternate motion is to seek a refusal of this particular planning permit application. I'm seeking to refuse this planning permit application because it seeks to add an additional 10 gaming machines to the Templestow Hotel in uh, Lower Templestow in Manningham. And I remain very seriously concerned, councillors, that the proposition before us isn't an appropriate one. We have a large number of losses being made in our city to gambling machines. Current, in the previous financial year, $58.5 million lost to, gam to gaming machines in the city of Manningham. <coughs> That's an increase of around 9% on the previous year. That's a very substantial problem we have, councillors. With 75,000 persons over the age of 18 in our city, that means we are seeing losses of $780 per adult in the city of Manningham through these gaming venues. It's my view that we should, as a council, be seeking to prevent the expansion of gaming within our city. 
and this is a great opportunity where we have a venue applying for an additional 10 ga gaming machines where we should stand up and be counted on behalf of our community and oppose the insidious expansion of this hugely problematic development of gaming in our city and our country. We're seeing a proposal that seeks to have hours of operation um, till 3 a.m. I can see no rationale for having opera hours of operation after midnight. In fact, if you look at the hours of operation of this particular venue, it starts at 7 a.m. What it serves to do is to provide for 24-hour gaming in our city. If you move from venue to venue, this is the only venue opening at 7 a.m., you then have a situation where people can move from a venue that closed at 7 to this venue and continue gambling. It's an insidious problem where we have problem gamblers moving around the city from venue to venue to game. We need to stand up and be counted on this, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot continue to support this. Now, this particular application, the, uh, the family... Uh, the licensee in this particular venue is a gentleman by the name of Grollo, Gianni Grollo, and he just happens to be married to, I understand, the daughter of Bruce Matheson. And you might know that Bruce Matheson has a fairly substantial interest in gaming in this, in this state. Um, he actually controls many, already controls many of the other venues in our city and seeks to make a fair bit of money from gambling in our city. And this will actually serve to expand the reach of that empire, in my view. I don't believe we should be supporting it, councillors. I think we should be... Um, seeking to reduce access to gambling in our city, constrain this particular proposition, and if we are going to see gambling uh, continue in our city, then we want it done in a venue that is actually operating in a way that is actually somewhat constructive. If you go into this particular venue, and you, you'll see from the plans, councillors, page 27 of the planning report, you'll see the plans for this venue. If you look at it just behind reception, it says something like lounge area, and then it describes it as waiting area. If you actually go to that venue, what you'll find is those are tables for the bistro and all of those areas have direct line of sight into the gaming room. There's no screening on this gaming room. If you go to order a drink at the bar in this bistro area, you cannot stand anywhere to order a drink that doesn't have a view into the gaming room. How? If you look at the, the bottom right-hand corner, folks, this particular area, it's not marked on the plan, it's a playground in the bistro outside a set of doors from the gaming room. Now, those, gaming, those doors are locked if you go down there, but the only way that young people, children can access that from the bistro, they've got, if you walk through reception, you walk straight through reception, which is the main entrance from the car park, what do you see? Direct line of sight into the flashing lights, colours and bells and whistles of the gaming machine. This is a terribly designed venue. It has excessive hours of operation. It contributes to problem gambling in our city. And, councillors, I ask you to terminate this proposition. Do not give this applicant the opportunity to expand this insidious problem in our city. Close it down, ladies and gentlemen. We should be fighting this on behalf of our community, not advocating for it. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Would the second I'd like to speak? Madam Mayor, uh... Paul McLeish's very convincing arguments makes, makes uh, my comments superfluous. However, I do have some uh, personal experiences uh, of the trauma that gambling has caused to friends of mine. And uh, I feel it's vitally important that this council not only oppose this particular application, but even strengthen our ability to refuse such applications in a statutory way. Unfortunately, the health uh, city strategy of ours makes it quite clear uh, uh, of the harm that gambling causes and uh, makes it clear that we wish to reduce it. However, we haven't set any targets by how much do we want to reduce it and we haven't incorporated this strategy as part of the Manningham planning scheme. Had we done that, it would have been much uh, easier for us to sustain uh, such a rejection. So I fully support uh, the rejection of this on principle. The number of uh, 
uh, machines uh, is relatively small, particularly when one considers that Manningham is permitted to have uh, 400 uh, more machines than what we currently have, 522 we have, but in fact we are permitted to have another 400, and that makes it imperative for us to do anything we can to prevent any uh, uh, machines to be added to the existing ones. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zephyropoulos. Are there any speakers against the motion? Are there any other speakers? No? All right, Councillor Goff. You thank speak you, against the motion? No, no, I'm speaking. All right, thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I, will, I will support this motion uh, that's come up here, but I just caution uh, adulation that we're going to have over this because, indeed, um, the numbers are... Well, I'll ask the numbers. What are the num permitted numbers of machines in Manningham? Is there a question? Yeah, it is. All right. First question. Yes. Mi thank you, Mr uh, Columbus. One hundred and forty-five. That's correct, and uh, of which we have five hundred and twenty-two, uh, which is about fifty-five percent. So Manningham at the moment is running under that. Now, a number of years we have had some programs here, councillors, with anti-gambling programs and all the rest. The 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 one difficulty I see it, and I've seen this film before, and I've seen I've seen the film where we were spent money and we went against a a um, a bottle shop that was mm. trading in a shopping centre and we were beating our chests about we didn't like bottle shops and drinking. And it all went through and, of course, a shop was a shop and the bottle shop was built. And again with this, officers, if you actually read the report, it doesn't look really good and in all communications around from the VLGA who had been reporting into us to influence and other people, it, with all of that coming in, and even from people sending things around, it's saying it looks as if we're not going to get this. So I, uh, you know, and I understand that. So councillors, let's understand that this is money we're spending on making ourselves feel good about protesting against poker machines. But in the end, I think we need to watch the space of what actually occurs, and I think we need to keep the community in, uh, abreast of, of what happens there. But in, into the concept of, of gambling, I've, I'm not a gambler myself. And I do understand that uh, I do know some people that have been hurt by gambling and, and all the rest there. But there are limits. This is a state government controlled thing and we are getting the planning processes in here to be consulted with regard to that in, in, the, in the situation. And uh, we perhaps are going outside some of those grounds. However, I do support the motion, so I'm speaking in favour of it. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Are there any speakers? Councillor Galberley. Uh, yes, just on the back of um, Councillor Goff's message, um, I don't see this as a feel-good message. Um, I see this as a message out there to the state, whoever is telling us that we can have 945 machines and they're not here to pick up the pieces after we've got that. I think 522 is probably 522 too many. So... Um, uh, I think this is not just a feel-good uh, message. This is a message that I'm hoping state government could listen to and actually act on and start um, being responsible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gabbardy. Are there any speaker? Councillor Haynes? Thank you. All I would like to add is um, I do know that there are some councils that have stood against it across the whole of their municipality to the state and stood up to the planning schemes in certain areas and, uh, and won, so I'm hoping that we can fight the good fight on behalf of our residents. What Thank, was Thank um, you, Councillor Haynes. Oh, well, Are there any speakers? <laughs> Councillor, uh, sorry, oh, Councillor Kleinert. <laughs> um, Thanks for your mission. I think yeah. Councillor Galbally summed it really uh, fine. It's 502 many that we have in our city. 20. And I think we need to, like many other councils before us and hopefully many councils after us, stand up to state government and say we're sick of this, we don't like it. Yeah, we'll probably lose in VCAT, but, you know, 
Councillor McLeish made a very, very good point, because I don't like gambling. I'm not a gambler. I never will be. And I've seen the, the destruction that it does to families, not just one family, but hundreds of people. And I think there's a moral, we've got a moral duty to our city to stand up, be very strong, and councils across Victoria, across other states, because we're much stronger anti-pokies than other states. Believe me, I know in recent times with what's happened with uh, other states that seem to allow it more freely. Uh, but we need to start, I think, standing up. Understand, yes, state government, ultimately they dictate it. They dictate a lot of things that we in local government have to sit and go yes, yes, yes to. And residents don't understand. Sometimes we are powerless. But this here, I still feel that we're powerless, but I think in our little etching back at state government to say, no, this is wrong. Too much money is going down the gurgler. It is families are being destroyed. It is not a good news story. It's a bad news story. I'm so thankful that in my city, none of our RSL clubs have, have pokey machines. That's something that we're proud of in Manningham. And yes, you know, if we can keep that down, as much as we can, we might lose this battle, but I think we shouldn't go down without a very, very good fight. The officers, you know, I commend them in, on the report that it's all, you know, the requirements that they have to just meet. But I think it goes beyond that for us. It's the moral ground of which we stand, the voice that we make, that perhaps other councils, we need to make it very loud and clear to state government that we say no to this. Because yes, we might be councillors in a position that we make these decisions, but we're still residents. We still live in the environment. We still love our city. We still care about our neighbour and what effect it, it, it makes. It's horrible to drive past early in the morning and you see the cars going in and you know where they're going and you know that their families don't know where they're going. And I, I'm just, it, it sickens me. So it's really fired me up actually. And that's, you know, Councillor McLeish hit so many points that made me just realise, yes, you know, chances are we'll lose it you know, in VCAT, but I think we shouldn't go down without a very strong message that hopefully other councils will fight together that maybe, just maybe, state government might change their, their mind about it. I doubt it, but you know what? I'm sick of being silent. Thank you, Councillor Kainer. Are there any speakers? Well, if no, and uh, would the mover like to close? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam, Order. Madam Deputy no Mayor. No, no oh, sorry, no, spe no speaker against the motion. I apologize. Division. All in favor? Councillor Chen, Councillor Dallas, Councillor Haynes, Councillor Gove, Councillor Pullen, Councillor. Now we move to item point nine three. Application for N eighteen zero zero fifteen Glendale Avenue, ten percent for of eight two seconds. Do I have a reason? Thank you. Madam Mayor, and I'd like to uh, uh, support the report for a permit to be issued to this application. I've been around here in Council for quite a long time, and uh, I can remember the first, as we started Doncaster Hill, uh, the Church of Christ. And the dining on opposite Doncaster Hill uh, from point onwards. So that probably from about 2003 uh, to uh, every few months the Doncaster Hill breakfast. So a couple of uh, talks about development going ahead. In a number of situations, but none of them are the final that we've had now. Please, Madam Deputy Mayor. Councillor, my understanding is that we're talking about item 
That will change around. We should um, keep that one going. Keep, no, 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 we can't. We can't because. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. We're talking about 9.3. We're not talking about 9.3. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I'll move that particular motion, Madam Mayor. All right. We, you can start again. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And in this particular situation, uh, we're talking about the eight uh, double-storey uh, developments within within uh, Glendale. Glendale. Glendale Road. You're right. Uh, Madam Mayor, I was unable to get to the submitters meeting on the Monday night. However, I was at the meeting a couple of weeks before where people came through with their issues with regard to the planning on this particular site and did have a very good understanding of that and the issues that people raised. I've since found out that one of the major issues in this particular area is with regard to the, um, to the, uh, the car parking and parking in the, in the streets. And if this particular motion does get up, I would like to move a supplementary motion to the motion and to the point of saying that, uh, that Council uh, immediately undertake a parking precinct plan and investigate permits for the area. So if, if, the, if this particular item does get passed, I would want to move a supplementary motion to that uh, straight afterwards. So, Councillor Goff, you are foreshadowing. I'm foreshadowing. All right. If this gets up, a supplementary motion. Yes. Thank you for the notice. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm saying that so when I get up straight afterwards and move the supplementary motion, you're not going to ask me to sit down. Now, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, this is a very hard one in many ways, in that we have uh, identified an area of Manningham to be DDO8. And as soon as we do that, we have raised the value of all the blocks of land and the expectation of density on it. That's what we've done. And when we're sitting here saying, right, we need to look at it, we need to look at it in terms of not two blocks of land somewhere else. If it was in a couple of streets away, you wouldn't get anything like this on that sort of development. You might get four, maybe five on that size of block. But because it's in the DDO8, there are different expectations of density. This is an area we've marked for change. Just like Doncaster Hill is an area we've marked for change. We've made great rises in value of property in Doncaster Hill, but the downside of it is that. And whenever we have our plans to say where do we put our, our stuff, we say along the main roads and around shopping centres. Now, the thing is, Madam Mayor, this uh, density in this particular area has consequences. Just like in Doncaster Hill, high density has consequences. It does have more traffic. It does have a lot of, uh, of that and parking, it becomes a real problem. Now, I understand that we have now got, and please officer, uh, nod to me while I'm talking, we have got the car stackers that always remain one empty. When a car is out of it, you can always drive a car in. So we've got the three spaces. And this is very important because we were at a meeting the other day and if you had a car stack, you might have to wait to get a car up into the air before you could get yourself out or in and out or you couldn't take that other car out. So in this particular case, there's always a place empty so it will always have a car, which cuts the problem that really exists in this because the reason they're able to get these in is because of the car stackers, but the car stackers aren't illegal and in a particular case when you have the three size car stacker there's always an open place in the garage. One of the main issues though is uh, rubbish and that's been corrected. I think we t I talked about uh, articulation between the buildings so there is a separation even at ground floor now with the uh, bottom story so there is there are four blocks of building here rather than two long continuous buildings. Uh, there are a number of extra setbacks. There are quite a, quite a lot of things that have been put into, and I think it's in a fairly exhaustive list of, of conditions that have been applied to this particular um, development that have appeared from that first consultation meeting uh, to come in to be passed here with that. And I commend uh, our office and everything for con getting all of that particular information in. Rubbish removal, how would you like to see 16 lots of rubbish bins out there every week for two days, you wouldn't. So that's not going to occur in that situation. However, <laughs> the situations of people coming in and driving in and not being able to get their car away and so therefore park in the street 
is one of the main issues at the moment, and it's something that we need to desperately do in Manningham. If we pass this, we need to actually start solving those problems of that higher density, and that's why I'm asking for us to actually look at a little parking precinct plan in that particular area. It's a bit of a landlocked area down there, by the way. And also uh, look at introducing permits straight away, of which these developments will not, I understand, have parking permits available to them to park in the street. So in that regard, um, councillors, we... Councillor, your time is up. Oh, thank you very much. Would well, anyone like to move an extension of time for Councillor Goff to continue for further two minutes? So move, Madam Deputy Mayor. Seconder? Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Councillor McGray. Okay. You can continue. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, so in many ways, uh, if you read through the report, the conditions are met. And as we start reading down through and seeing all of our conditions met, we've got officers' reports saying met, 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 and met with condition, met with condition, met with condition, or <coughs> doesn't apply. Now, if we read through that, councillors, we, we have advertised, if think about it, we need to, I suppose, in many ways support this at this particular stage, because what it is, is our planning scheme. It is what it is. The zone is what it is. We can only make decisions on what it is. Uh, if we want to talk about what it could be in the future, then we could actually uh, <coughs> run something into that. But at the moment, it is what it is, and uh, we have to make a decision on that basis. So, councillors, that's why I'm supporting this with, the, uh, with a bit of reservation, because quite honestly, Madam Mayor, that sort of design, and I don't know whether we can get something into our planning scheme or into our books with design, that design of a road down the middle and, and, and things side by side, I know it complies and the things will comply, but it isn't visually very nice. And I don't, think, I don't think it's visually very nice as a reason to rule it out. However, if we had something in our, our uh, policies uh, about how it looks, uh, it might be good. And this isn't the first time yeah, I've, I've brought that up. There are other occasions where that's happened. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Would there a second I'd like to speak? Nothing further to add. Thank you, Councillor Collin. Are there any speakers against the motion? Councillor Clement. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Chen. It's actually a, it's a hard one. Um, it's a decision to grant um, a permit based on 71 conditions, a lot of conditions there, and that says something about the fact uh, that the officers had to work very hard. But there's a few points um, that bother me, and I respect that that is the planning scheme. That planning scheme was set in uh, many moons ago, way, way before my time, and um, that was on the direction of state government putting a big plan that councils needed to abide by. I get that. I also live and reside in a DD08. I reside and live in the same expected density. But I don't hear residents saying, I don't like um, over, uh, I don't like development. It's the overdevelopment that is the common thread. Now I understand where I live. Uh, my backyard behind me, that backs onto a main road, will have a monstrosity one day. And you know what? I'll respect that. That's just what happened. But it's on a main road. It's not in a little side street. It's not <laughs> in a landlocked uh, little suburban residential area. And that's what I struggle with. That's what ultimately the residents struggle with. So the planning amendment scheme, we can go down that path, that would never happen. The state government minister would laugh it off. So what do we do? How, how do we seek the best outcomes? Um, you know, if something like this was to happen, yes, you know, you put restrictions. We're trying very hard as a council to put restrictions in areas. But one thing remains, we are not Doncaster Hill. We don't have the bus system that Doncaster Hill has, where we encourage development that's, you know, to the heavens and you know and I respect that I rather it in an area there but in the back streets of Glendale Avenue which currently when I drive past it or drive down it to get around have to drive extremely slow and then I have to curtail and that's before the start of the development that's going to happen the stackers yeah I don't like them that's the <coughs> developers you know if they think that's going to grade and sell <coughs> yeah great that's that's not my um yeah, that's not a feasible argument on what they choose. If someone chooses to buy that, that's what they choose to buy. But I am uncomfortable with the intensity and the scale of this. 71 conditions. 
The permits granted based on 71 conditions. Officers have worked very hard. They are bound by the planning scheme that we ultimately endorse. I understand that. That's why it complies, but I can't say I'm comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable in a side street, in a landlocked street. It's not on a main road. It's not on Foot Street. And yes, we approved the ones on Foot Street. And you know, yes, I did, because it's on the main road. And people, crazy enough, are not going to, you know, they're going to park in there. The side streets are already filled, already filled. And what we've got to do with our residents is work with regards to parking restrictions. Thankfully, we've endorsed that in, in April. That was a good endorsement, which means the current residents that live, they will not have restrictions on parking. These developments, these types, which are going to happen in this area, in this DDO8 area. Thank you, Councillor. Your time is up. I'm I think afraid that's that enough. I think I've said my point, but yeah. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> now, are there any speakers for the motion? If there are no, f yes, Councillor Tuferopoulos. Would you like to speak? Yeah. Yes, Madam Deputy Mayor. Uh, uh, I, I also have uh, expressed my opposition to overdevelopment, uh, particularly in the Kunan Ward, but it's slowly and gradually will start happening everywhere else. Um, I think it's. I think most of it has been said, except the fact that uh, our officers are playing uh, a good role in discussions with developers to try to ameliorate the problems. And let me explain what happened here. I think it's in the report. In May 2018, uh, this particular application had 12 three-storey dwellings. A few months later, in October 18, they reduced it to eight three-storey ones and two two-storey ones. I'm sure that the, they had discussions with the officers. And the lightest application is eight two-storey buildings. It just shows uh, that the, the greed with people embrace what we have done with DDO8 needs to be uh, slowed down, needs to be uh, uh, reduced whenever we can. We need to strengthen our planning scheme to prevent uh, excessive developments. And uh, I think reducing the two is fine, but obviously the other problems that Councillor Goff and, and Councillor Klein had mentioned about parking uh, and a few other things uh, are still there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zephyropoulos. Are there any other speakers wish to speak? If there are no other speakers, so would the mover like to close? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, look, I will, I will close with this, but there, there are a number of issues, and, and one of them has the parking and whatever has been picked up. The appropriateness of an area, I take in, in behind in an area, and perhaps we do need to look at anomalies within our planning scheme and to areas where there are anomalies, because if you look at this area on a flat map, it is very close to, to Templestowe Village. However, it's up a very steep hill and there are, there are no real direct connections. You've got to go out into the main road to get up into this. So it is a bit of a hidden precinct corner which is really locked away. And so perhaps uh, I will uh, move to say I'll, 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 I'll let the motion go through and then I've got a supplementary motion that you need to listen to. All right. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Now I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Four. Four in favour. All those against? Four, four and four against. So I have the casting vote. So I vote against the motion. So it's four to five. The motion is now carried. Thank you. They need a refusal. You need a refusal. Now I need to move a motion to refuse the recommendation, Council's recommendation. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kleinert. Do I have a, yes, Councillor Kleinert? I move that the planning application, did I get that right? 
PLN 18 forward slash 0304 at 15 Glendale Avenue, Templestowe, for eight, construction of eight two storey dwellings. We refused. Thank you, Councillor Kleiner. Do I have a second? Councillor Zephyropoulos. All right, I put it. So, Councillor Kleiner, would you like to speak for the motion? Um, just to explain. Yeah, yeah. Just to explain the grounds of refusal, the proposal number one. Proposal fails to respect the character of the area, particularly given the continuous built form, mass and scale. Two. The proposal in, will result in limited landscaping opportunities as a result of paved areas in front and uh, front setback and decking. Three, the driveway layout and parking arrangements at the rear of the site does not provide the convenient and efficient vehicle movements. Four, the proposal results in overlooking concerns to adjacent properties. Just, just to clarify, Madam Deputy Mayor, those four conditions are actually part of the motion, is that correct? Is correct. Thank you. Now, the, will the second like to speak? No? Are there any speakers? No. I'll put the motion to vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. Councillors, before we move to move on to item nine point two, I will wait for Councillor Piccinini to return to the meeting room and assume the chair. Thank you. Supplementary motion. To which item? The, the previous item. It's, we're not discussing 9 .3. the previous item. Yes, not discussing I have the a conflict item. in that item, Councillor Goff. You so. lose it. I can't move it now. I'll have to vacate. Yes. I have oh, a conflict. May I, I move a supplementary motion? Yes. Sorry about that. You've got a bit enthusiastic. Mm. They missed you. Okay, Councillor Gov. Uh, I move that uh, that Council uh, immediately undertake a park and precinct plan and investigate permit areas for the areas surrounding uh, Avenue. Glendale Avenue and B and 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 Part B uh, inquire about the use of garages as storage areas. Uh, in multi-density uh, units and banning it to be used as storage in multi-density places. Okay, so there are two issues. One is the parking precinct plan and the second is the use of garages in multi-density uh, dwellings. So that's two parts of the motion that I'm moving uh, if we could undertake the studies into those areas. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Haynes. I, I saw Councillor Hans first. Okay. Very excited about that one. Would Councillor Goff like to speak? No, Madam Mayor, these are huge issues. These two issues are huge issues with regard to uh, high density living, and that is the access in and around parking, car movements, and the use of what is supposed to be a garage for uh, cars ends up being either extra living rooms or storage areas and the cars are parking out in the street, which is causing added problems. So I'm wondering what we can do with regard to the area, uh, with regard to that. And at a later date, Madam Mayor, I think we need to, uh, i just put on notice that we really do need to undertake a study of some black spots within our DDO8 areas. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gov. Would the second like to speak? Um, not to hold up any more time. Um, yes, that word huge is definitely um, 
one of the things I was going to bring up earlier to do with garages that are supposed to be garages and people are living in them and not using them to park cars. I don't know how we're going to enforce it. I've had conversations with um, law enforcement people and they've said that they can't get on with the properties to enforce it, but I'm asking that we as a council really do, do whatever we can to endeavour to change not only local laws but even to change to state laws um, to actually advocate for properties to be able to be accessed um, by local laws officers um, to be able to enforce the garages to be used as garages as well as the other parking issues on the streets and permits. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Are there any speakers? No, Ca I do Councillor Gabberley, you have a question. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to find a relevance to this motion as a supplementary motion to the one we've just had. Is that what's happening? Madam Mayor, I'll answer that one. Yeah. I believe it's relevant because this is going off to VCAT and it is an issue. And whether if VCAT uh, agree with us, that's fine. But if VCAT disagree with our finding, then we've still got the same problem and it's supplementary out of the fact that there's been an application for a development and we need to actually work now before other developments come through to have a plan with regard to that. So I think it is directly related to that particular location. Thank you, Councillor Goff. I, and I do think that the question, yeah, and the alternative motion is relevant. Thank you, Councillor Gabberley. Are there any speakers? If no, I put the motion to vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. Now, I have to ask Councillor Piccinini to return to the meeting room and assume to the chair again before we move on to item 9.2. Thank you. Sorry, Madam. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Thank you. Item number 9.2, planning application PLN 18 slash 0571 at 674 to 680 Doncaster Road, 2 Short Street, 14, 14A, 16 and 18 Hepburn Road, Doncaster, for the partial demolition of the existing building, use and development of the land for a 13-storey mixed-use building comprising of 136 dwellings, place of assembly, childcare centre, food and drink premises and office. Reduction in standard car parking requirements and the creation and alteration of access to a road in a road zone category one. Do I have a mover? Yes, I will move, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Would the mover like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, take two. Very good. No, I won't. I won't go through the, uh, the free breakfast uh, for a long time that have occurred on this. And it's been a very difficult site, Madam Mayor, this particular site to uh, get things on because of uh, we've had a number of different iterations of a development, and uh, I understand that we've finally got something here that is a, a very good development that satisfies a number of areas of operation. First of all, of the church and, and, and a meeting place for a community, but also apartments and also some affordable housing that is, is incorporated into this development and um, also uh, some shops and, and things. This has had to go through a lot of hoops, especially with the overlays that we have on Doncaster Hill and the performance that we have of what we're wanting, like a podium level, a presentation to Doncaster Hill, there are a whole lot of issues that go through there, and there were some minor alterations throughout the process that were granted in here with regard to the size of the towers and the, and the form of the building in there uh, that had been negotiated through here. Um, like any project, it's not automatic that things get built. Often, Madam Mayor, uh, affordability of projects often means that we pass the development, but what actually occurs out of it does never get built. And uh, sometimes these particular developments that have a lot of other facilities in them um, 
sometimes find it hard to stack up, and I hope this one does stack up, because into the city of Manningham, I think this will be a great asset to our central core area of Doncaster Hill. Now, I did go to the submitters meeting uh, of this particular one the other night, um, and that was on Thursday. I was unable to come on Monday, but on Thursday night, I got up to listen to people talk about this. And indeed, well, the some of the major considerations were very similar, and I will have a supplementary motion to this one too with regard to that area. But um, the, uh, what, it, this particular uh, development, uh, was the major issue was parking, transport and amenity around the area uh, because we have created a high density area and there are offshoots of, as it's being built out, what is occurring around the area. And it's something that we at Council at Manningham really do need to get on top of uh, for the future. But it was about that and they were questioning the actual entrances of the driveways into the building and that was a, a, a main area of concern for people were the, where the parking entrances were located. However, having heard that and looking at the development and looking at the block, if you know anything about the street, it does go down a fairly steep, uh, oh. steep incline. And indeed, um, the, the driveways being opposite each other, I don't know that that in itself creates a problem because if driveways are opposite each other, <coughs> it's not a problem with turning right or left because you have more space. If it was a car parked opposite a driveway and anyone in a driveway trying to get out of a driveway with a car right opposite where there's parking, uh, it's very impossible. But if there is another road on the opposite side, you can do the turn. I don't know, but that was the, that was the opposition. And I looked at it and said, can it be moved? And indeed, it really can't unless you redevelop the whole building because as it goes down, you have to have a certain height at the level of, of the, the decline of the road to get enough space to get a car in underneath. So it limits the portions of the road that you can actually have those other entrances on. And I think uh, it has been studied uh, far and wide of trying to move it around and trying to get it to a different place. But indeed, if you actually think about it, you can get in at this point and then you've got to wait for a three metre drop at least before you can get the similar sort of um, height to get into that next story of the particular building as it goes across. But Madam Mayor, this has been a long time in the making and this, if it does get built and does get finished, uh, will add a great deal of amenity of not only a worship place for the people of that congregation, but housing in our area, a retail trade, affordable housing, a number of affordable housing uh, dwellings in there, and also a meet a function at a meeting place. I said that, did I? And also some shop, some trading and some shopping into that area to activate that side of the road. Uh, Madam Mayor, if this gets up, I or even if it doesn't, um, I've got a supplementary motion uh, with regard to this. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I'm pleased to speak to this particular proposition because. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile, worthwhile addition to the Doncaster Hill precinct. Uh, the church across the road and its surrounds have been awaiting this proposal for many years. It's gone through many, many iterations in an attempt to try and uh, balance the competing demands that exist within the site. And the net outcome is going to be an, quite an extraordinary piece of community facility. It's going to preserve and conserve the Church of Christ building on that site. It's going to incorporate that building into the, the podium levels. And in doing so, that will provide a substantial childcare centre with capacity for 125 children, um, in, which, including an 840 square metre outdoor play area. It's going to include a swimming pool. It's going to have a substantial outdoor communal space, 240 square metres of communal space for the apartment users. We've got a very large auditorium with a capacity of 650 people, a hall, an, uh, and another hall with, with a capacity of 400 people, numerous ancillary rooms. So we're going to have a very substantial improvement to the available community facilities in our, in our city. 
having a theatre of that size uh, is has been a long, an auditorium of that size has been a long time coming in this city, and to see the uh, the proponent through the church adding these community based facilities and incorporating them into a, a quite a complex uh, site is a great step forward for the community and a great improvement for Doncaster Hill. And finally, seeing that we're going to have six apartments capable of housing um, affordable housing, thank you, my brain couldn't find that phrase. Six apartments capable of housing six people and their carers through uh, Manningham Inclusive Community Health being included in the development is a great uh, opportunity, again, for a significant development to be finally providing affordable housing in our city. We've had a number of these affording, affordable housing um, changes to developments come through, courtesy of the, the excellent work through the, by the planning part, department in, in pushing the developers to make sure we include such things. And I'm pleased to see it coming to fruition in this proposal and encourage councillors to support it. Thank you, councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Councillor Chen. Madam Mayor, I have great respects for the applicant and its supporters. But as a councillor, I'm responsible to the wider community to ensure that all aspects are well considered. Firstly, amenity impact resulting from the vehicle access and the traffic movement. The access points of this apartment, uh, the, of this development, are from Short Street and Hepburn Road. Both are seven metres wide, two-lane local road. Once both sides are parked, it becomes difficult, very difficult manoeuvring, especially for senior drivers, nervous drivers like me, and the drivers have mobility issues. One of the proposed access points opposite the sole access point of the apartments at 20 Hepburn Road. It creates a safety concern. Just two days ago, I did witness a near miss at Short Street when conducting a site visit. That was on Sunday about a quarter past 11. I just nearly screamed. And just so, Madam Mayor, I draw your attention to item uh, 9.5 of the agenda. That, was an, uh, that is an application including a tri-care centre of 100 children at uh, Clay Drive. Clay Drive is a 7.1 metre wide local road. It is located next to Short Street. The report finds that the tri-care centre will cause traffic congestion during peak hours and will result in additional amenity impacts to the nearby properties. Why a childcare centre with small children is okay with its nearby pro uh, properties? I don't understand. And the major concern is the reduction of car parking spaces. It is great for Manhattan community to have a place of assembly with the capacity of 1,200 patrons. The size is large enough to hold <coughs> large events and conferences in Doncaster Hill Principal Activity Centre. But Doncaster Hill is also a victim of its own success. Our local streets are facing parking, traffic, and congestion issues. There is, of course, no quick fix to the, uh, for those issues. But one thing council could do is to ensure the application complies with our local planning scheme. Our, parking par our car parking rate is clearly prescribed in Clause 52.06 of Mannequin Planning Scheme. So 360 spaces will be required for 1,200 patrons. Even Council tried very hard to cap the patron numbers to 650. There, was, there is still a shortfall of 74 car parking spaces at a certain period of time. Councillor, you have gone past time. Can I have a motion? I'll move the uh, time, Dixon. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a second? Uh, thank you, Councillor Zapropoulos. All those in favour? Motion passed. You may continue. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It also begs the question whether the shared parking arrangement 
will work as planned. There is enforcement issues outside business hours. It is likely to increase council's <coughs> enforcement cost to secure compliance. This is a cost to all our rate payers. I further note that a separate application will consider an increase to the height of the building through a planning scheme amendment. Madam Mayor, our city is choking. If the president is set, we will be obliged to apply it for any future applications. Council could not afford to set such a president. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers for the motion? I'll, go, I'll start with Councillor Kleinert. Councillor Kleinert. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I see this is a very good uh, application. I'm very ecstatic that there's affordable housing. I'm ecstatic that it's in an area where there's lots of buses that people can access. It's not in a back street of a residential place. Um, I'm not against development. It's where a, there's places for it and there's places where it's not appropriate here. I think it's wonderful that we'll have for Doncaster Hill a hall to fit 400 people. Where else can you go in Doncaster Hill? There is nothing. It's providing a really good space. It's providing for... Uh, it's 136... Is it 136 dwellings? Uh, providing... Uh, where they can uh, live, have their children in childcare and catch the bus, not have to drive anywhere. I think that's very creative. I think the, the applicants actually worked very hard, very long process to try and get it right. I think it's wonderful that the church is investing for a place of worship uh, that is in the heart of, of Doncaster Hill. Uh, I, have, I, I frequent a, 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 a place where it's 150 dwellings. And I often have to drive there. And it's interesting, when I drive there, I go in, I'm able to park, and I leave. And I notice that uh, because of where it's located, this place, uh, people use transport. They don't park. It's easy and accessible. This is just like that. It's 136 um, dwellings. It is in the Doncaster Hill Precinct, which is a very, very different uh, area, very different culture. Um, people either love it, they buy into it, but I think uh, of the developments that I've seen in Doncaster Hill, I don't often speak uh, for them. This one, I I'm, I'm quite happy. I think the officers have worked uh, very hard and there's not uh, 71 conditions like other applications that we've, we've um, had come to our table this evening. So, hence, um, you know, I, I'm happy to uh, vote in favour of this proposal. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Against? I've so, actually got... Um, yes. It, 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 it Councillor Galbally? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's on the affordable housing issue. I know we're all happy the fact that we've got um, uh, six units, which is 5%, yet in our uh, affordable housing strategy and action plan for Doncaster Hill, we stipulate that we expect 10%. Yet we're, we're, we're too ready to accept the 5% or just a bit, bit, um, oh, a bit below it, actually. And because basically if we had 13%, we should be getting 13 dwellings. So I do have a question to our um, officer, please. Um, the six dwellings, are, do we know if they're one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms? I'll direct that yeah, question. Stipulated. I'll direct that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr. Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you, our understanding is that they're two bedroom. They're all two bedroom. We're we're care of. That's care one of. consolation. Yeah. Thank you. But but in future, I I really would like us to be pushing the ten percent. I mean, what's the what's the point of having it? Uh, something stated in no action plan if we're not going to um, back it up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers for the motion? Councillor Conlon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd actually like to just address, uh, like I'm, I think this is, a, firstly, it's a great development for Doncaster Hill. It's a great for the wider community. And I appreciate the work and the long time that the uh, proponents have put into this. 
over I think more than a decade this has been um, going on and they've worked with uh, the community, they've worked with council officers, they've worked with council laws. I've been part of the developers breakfast as Councillor Goff mentioned. Um, this, is, uh, this is a great example of how developments should be developed I think, how they should come to fruition. But I'd actually like to just address a number of items that um, Councillor Chen and Councillor Galbally mentioned. <coughs> Firstly, in regarding, uh, in rega and I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll give a bit of background. I, I did go to the submitters meeting, and the, the main issue from the, those objectives was around parking. And I hope that Councillor Goff's supplementary motion is going to address the parking in Short Street, particularly, and make. And hopefully that we, can, as a council, can review that and make sure there is parking on one side of that street and not the other, because there is a clear issue in terms of traffic, and it's not to do with this development, it's to do with all the, um, the side streets that are actually fed off Short Street. <laughs> short Street is actually uh, Access. a narrow street. It's short and narrow. <laughs> okay? So that's the issue. Um, the, the, and the number of um, cars going down that, I, like, I look forward to the supplementary motion. I might propose an amendment to that, but I think that we need to be quite clear that that is Council's responsibility. That is not a problem of this development. We are considering the application tonight for a permit, which the officers have endorsed, and it, have they taken into account the traffic where they can? In regard to the parking, the Councillor the number of car, car parking spaces. If you read on page 72 of the report, it's very clear that all this has been considered. There's restrictions on when the um, various parts of the development can be used, which means, and I'll just read straight out of the, by placing limitations on the days and hours of operations, uh, 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 sorry, of operation of other uses, including the, the officer, that the office and childcare would not operate on weekends and at all other times of the week, the provision of 202 spaces within the non-residential car park will meet the total anticipated car parking demand. 8.56, an assessment against the car parking design standards is provided in the table below. 8.55, subject to the above additional limitations, the non-residential car park will provide an appropriate number of spaces across the four uses that will accommodate the anticipated demand. This rationale is not unusual for mixed use buildings with the, within the municipality and in, is supported by Council's Infrastructures Services Unit. So I don't, uh, I don't believe that the... Councillor, uh, you've the, gone over time. I Can I ask. call for an extension? Oh. Councillor Goff, do I have a seconder? Councillor McLeish, all those in favour? Motion passed. You may carry on. Councillor Conlon, thank you. So I think I've addressed that uh, question regarding the, the car parking. Uh, this is not an issue of, of car parking, it's, and, and as I'm sure Councillor Goff's supplementary question, uh, sorry, motion may address some of those issues. But in, in regard to Councillor Galbally's um, suggestion that we should be fighting for 10%, I think the fact that we've got 5% is fantastic because I don't see it too many other developments with 5%. So the fact that we don't get 5%, don't get 10%, I don't believe is a valid, um, is a valid reason for us to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Would any other speak, would any councillors like to speak? Councillor Zephyropoulos. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm for or against, but I do have a question. And, you have and, a the question. Qu <laughs> and the question relates to uh, whether we are aware that they are going to be seeking for a planning scheme amendment in order to increase the height of the building at uh, additional levels. Do we know how many levels they've got in mind? And if, if that is the case, do we know whether an extra portion of affordable housing will be included as part of that amendment? I'll put that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr Corumbus. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor, in response to your question, yes, there is a live planning scheme amendment. Uh, we hope 
to bring it to council for consideration in the next few months. It's with the proponent just doing some final design modifications. And it will include, we have asked for 10% affordable housing for the additional component, which is two levels. And I can't remember the specific number, but it's about 30 additional dwellings. So it'll be three or four additional um, affordable housing units. Thank you. Do, do you wish to speak or ask? No. I have a okay. question. You have a question. Uh, okay, Councillor. Well, I don't one. have a question. Mine's written when, I'm, when you want. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go with the question and then I'll go to Councillor Haynes. So, Councillor Conlon, you have a question? My question is Are we considering this application or a future application tonight? We're considering this. I'll put that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr. Corumbus. Um, through you, Madam Mayor. Tonight's consideration is this current planning application. Can I have another question? Yes, you're just further question. So further question. Does anything we decide tonight influence the future, um, the future decision? Like it's been implied that um, that this is should be that we should be taking that into consideration in terms of this decision tonight. Is that good governance practice? I guess that's my question. Well, I will put that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr. Corumbus, who's very familiar with planning procedure and planning law. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the Council has to make decisions on planning applications and planning scheme amendments on their own merits. So tonight's decision will have no bearing on Council's decision in the future, uh, should we Pursue that, you know, advance that planning scheme amendment. You will consider that on its own merits. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now go to um, very the very patient Councillor Haynes. Councillor Haynes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I too were toing and froing, but I have made a decision, so I hope that helps Councillor Zafiropoulos. Um, I, that councillors, you may be shocked, but I've been doing some research on these issues to do with childcare centres because there are so many childcare centres at the moment that are going to be coming up to council. We have them every week at the moment on our planning um, sheets handed to us and um, my thoughts on the childcare centres and my research has been because um, we have now federal funding and things like that to help families instead of just the family allowance that they used to get. Now there is specific funding for childcare. It's going to help people with their affordability and ability to be able to um, um, afford uh, their high um, costs of living. So I'm very much um, supporting the need for childcare centres within Manningham. Um, I would like us to stop any development. I would like Manningham to decide that it's not going to do any more. We don't have the room, we don't have the ability to be able to do those things, but I live in a world of practicality, so therefore I'm all for how we go about doing this at, with the best possible outcomes that we can provide to our community. We have a lot more residents with families and schools growing within Manningham, and this facility, is on the main road and will service those families. We also have um, the one coming up just after this, which is near the main road, um, that I'll be speaking about as well. But, uh, but this one, I will like to let councillors know, um, if they are speaking against it, they may want to consider that if this does um, have to be changed, they may want to just make it all residential and therefore there will be more parking needed. This is a really good outcome for the city because it's only the business times. The childcare centres are not open after hours and the ability for other uses within this misused building because there's less residents there is a really good outcome for our city. Um, the parking on all the buildings that we've got that are just all units uh, is an issue. So I'm glad that the uh, faith centre, as all faith centres always have the, um, the issues when they all gather together um, at a period of time, they will do their best to try and alleviate the issues of when they are gathering around their streets and uh, because, again, they are part of the community and they want to work with everybody. I, we see that at all the faith centres. So I'm hoping that um, the park amenity... There's, oh, there's also a park 
the Hepburn Road area, the Doncaster Hills strategy is to put a park just down the end of Short Street after we've got those other uh, issues and footpaths in. So it will be a nice park. We don't have a park near there at the moment, councillors. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how we work with this in the future and that the people that do live there are able to use that um, amenity as well. And the plaza on the main road, it Councilor will definitely Haynes, be... after being so patient, you have run out of time. Can I have an extension of time? Thank it's you, really Councillor short. Conlon. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Klein, and all those in favour, motion carried. You Thank may you. proceed. Thank you. Just quickly, um, the plaza. I'm really looking forward to the plaza area as well because um, we've put a nice little seating and plaza area up at the Doncaster RSL area and the streetscape along that is so much better what this will be will be so much better than many of those residential buildings that we've got along Doncaster Road that are just a fence and an entrance to a building. I'm actually looking forward to seeing a little bit more amenity for the people um, using Doncaster Road and I'm um, hoping that we support this facility. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have any other speakers? No, I think we've all spoken. So, Councillor Goff, would you like to close? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, I stand. I, it's interesting listening to the debate and, uh, and some of those issues that have, that have come through. Um, the the parking for the childcare, from what I understand, is internal to, in the building, so cars will not be dropping like in a lot of childcare centres in the surrounding streets. Uh, they drop the uh, park their car and take the children. In, in here, people are driving into the building, so the traffic is taken off the streets around there and people are unloaded inside that building, internal to it, to drop their children off and to pick them up again. So uh, there are a whole lot of things there. Anyone that says that high density doesn't mean higher traffic volumes, parking difficulties, and more people living closer together is lying to you. you know, it always is going to happen. And those are the choices are we've put on our maps, our planning maps, they're out there for everyone to read where we want that high density. This is the particular area that we need it. There are issues. I'm not saying that they're not, but uh, we need to overcome those that, that flow from this. So, Madam Mayor, I commend this particular. Thank you, Councillor. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? Motion carried. Madam Mayor, I have Councilor a supplementary Goff. motion. Yes. And that is that Council 1 uh, undertake, immediately undertake 1 a new vehicle movement and parking study, and two, an open space and community amenity study in the areas of Doncaster Hill, south of Doncaster Road, and east of Tram Road. That is my supplement. Can, I just, can you just repeat the last bit? An open space and community amenity... An, 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 an open and space and community amenity. Amenity study. study. Where was that again? In the area yep, of sorry. Doncaster Hill, south yep. of Doncaster Road, and east of Tram Road. Is that got all the way to Wonga Park, or are you stopping at the No, it's, if, it's study the Doncaster Hill In area. the Doncaster Hill area, so... Uh -huh. So, south of... Unless you want us to expand on Castle Hill to Wonga Park. <laughs> that would be helpful. Just, yeah. uh, thank you, Councillor Goff. If you can just be seated for one moment. I'm just going to take advice from governance just for one moment. Thank you. Um, Councillor Goff, I took advice on the question, question of relevance. So how relevant is this to the motion, or to the substantive motion, that is? Just one moment. So um, there, there are... I'm, I'm just going to allow um, the Director of City Planning and Community um, 
Mr Crumbers to comment on your motion as to relevance and if there are, you know if you could be satisfied with something in the alternative an alternative proposal just one moment councillor Karam. mr so no, no councillor director of city planning and community mr Corumbus. thank you madam mayor look my suggestion councillor was uh, it, it is relevant but uh, my alternate suggestion uh, is that um, we do that as part of the Doncaster Hill review. So take a more strategic approach. As councillors are aware, that's a priority for us and work is about to begin on that. So rather than do just sort of one part of the hill, we can ensure that we do that as part of the, okay, that I'm whole strategy. Madam Mayor, yes. I, 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 I take the relevance for this as being that we have a community there behind that out of the recognition of the passing of this motion have expressed at a number of occasions, if, if officers had come to those meetings, would hear what they're talking about with the amenity. Madam Mayor, we have a number of things around there that are, are difficulties. Okay, so Councillor Goff, I'm, I, I am going to accept the supplementary motion and you may now speak to it. You will have five minutes. Oh yes, of course. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Mr. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yes, uh, uh, Councillor Conlon, you second that motion. So you may now speak to your motion, Councillor Goff. You have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I rise to, uh, to raise this because it is important, as we're putting through uh, after the start of Doncaster Hill, and now it's getting more uh, compacted and there are a lot more buildings there, we really do need to urgently look at some things. Now, a study of Doncaster Hill over the whole is going to take quite some time and it might have more far-reaching uh, things. But what I'm talking about here is in the immediate future, we need to worry about things like bringing on that park. That park, we own the properties. We need to really look at making that park because we have a community there now without some things in there. That is what I'm talking about, the community amenity. Which, when are we going to bring it on? Are we going to look at the transport around there? There was, there was, there was in our plan, room made for a roadway to go through property and, and to circulate around. We need to look at the car circulations in that particular area. I'm not talking about the whole of Doncaster Hill. What I'm talking about is that little landlocked area in that area that we've got of Doncaster Hill that is posing problems for us now. And out of this particular uh, planning application, we do have a number of issues, i.e. the parking on Short Street and things like that. And these will be addressed if we have a quick look at this starting immediately. The, what is talked about by another councillor who is obviously involved in the meeting now uh, is that a, 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 a big uh, study of Doncaster Hill, uh, that is a different thing altogether to what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is what is flowing out of the decisions we're making tonight. And I hope Council will support this. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? Nothing further. Thank you. Are there any movers against the motion? Councillor McLeish. Firstly, Madam Mayor, could someone please read the motion to me? So yes, I, I can read it. I have a clear understanding of what okay. it is I'm supposed to be speaking to. That council immediately undertake, one, a new vehicle movement and parking study, and two, an open space and community am amenity study in the area of Doncaster, south of Doncaster... Doncaster in the area of Doncaster Hill. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Okay, south of Doncaster Road and east of Tram Road. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Madam Mayor, we as a city have a very, very comprehensive open space study. It's the most comprehensive, it's about that thick. It covers the entire municipality. It details every single park, its relationship to its neighbourhood community and how that open space will serve the community in which it exists and what the demands are to improve the efficacy of that open space, what sort of facilities we would expect to provide within that open space. That isn't a particularly old document. It's a relatively recent document. The move of this motion is the chair of the committee and aid, aided quite significantly in the delivery of that particular study. It's adopted council policy. Within that policy, we have a very clear undertaking that we will um, complete a park in Hepburn Avenue. We own three of the four available properties. This particular council has funded the work to convert those properties into a park. We're already doing it. 
We're also looking at the proposal to expand, extend the same, very same street, Hepburn Road, through to Clay Drive, and that will open up some of the traffic issues in the area. I simply cannot see how, in the context of us as a council, already having committed to a strategic review of the Doncaster Hill precinct and how that will continue to evolve within the <coughs> room, given that we've made a commitment to actually conduct that review, why we should, we should be spending time and energy focusing on one particular precinct where the fundamental issues are already being addressed through other work. Nothing we do in this organisation is free. The moment we say to the organisation, do an immediate review, we are taking resources away from other work they're already doing on our behalf. I, for one, do not want to see the very effective and detailed work that's being done by officers on a whole range of priorities that we've clearly laid out in our strategic program going forward over a number of years, including our planning scheme review, to see that subverted by doing one specific review of one specific piece of open space out of context of the rest of Doncaster Hill. I don't see that it has relevance. I, I, I fail to see why we should be committing resources to it, and I'm not convinced. If someone wants to do a particular parking study and see if there should be, then maybe there should be more areas that are reserved for permit parking or more areas of no standing in the seats surrounding that particular area, that may have some merit to address the concerns, that, the evolving concerns, because that's something that is not particularly onerous to do. But to start conducting open space reviews in this manner, I think, is unfortunate and unwise. Thank you, Councillor. And are there any speakers for the motion? I will. Thank you. Councillor Haynes. Madam Mayor, um, the request is for review of the vehicle movement around those specific areas, the parking around those specific areas, and the open space around those specific areas. It doesn't open up all of the reviews to do with the huge open space document that we've just heard about, and also the whole of the Doncaster Hill um, that we will be doing on a quite, probably spending a weekend sitting here and, and discussing that at length, because there are so many changes that have been discussed at all levels of government with that. This is just a small request to help the immediate people within the closest possible timeline. Um, without doing this, I think would be detrimental. We've already seen that we've got so many issues going on. This is not about the entire municipality. This isn't even about the entire Doncaster Hill. This is within a very short um, area and it is only three different things. Now, we do vehicle movement tests, as Councillor McLeish has just said. Um, uh, we do them constantly. We've done them recently on Hanky Road and we do them often. So to immediately request that they do it is something that we often even do as councillors without even bringing it as a motion. So this is just publicly saying that we're asking for a vehicle movement. Um, and also to do with the parking policies. We've already put the policies in place that can achieve the results of parking in a better. So to have that as a review right now is definitely something we do regularly without having to make a council meet, a policy, a council, do it at a council agenda. This is a quite a simple request and I'm asking that council uh, also support this because um, the cost is, um, is, is all, always um, within the budget. And we can add it to the budget if we like. We're about to be doing that over the next month and take it out of the cash reserves. But I don't see that that's necessary because we do have staff that are already doing these things and all he's requesting is in, isn't for extra finances or resources. It's to do it within what we're already doing. So, And it, is, um, it may be other areas that it might pull that away from, but the Doncaster Hill issue is, is growing exponentially. So it would be good to have a... Uh, up-to-date model of what this vehicle movement is at this time. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Councillor Galbally. Just very quickly. <coughs> um, Councillor Haynes did mention that uh, staff are uh, doing this all the time. And as we've heard before, that uh, it is part of the officer's plan to um, check all that and give us that report in due time at any rate, and, and spe specifically Doncaster Hill, 
And the area that uh, Councillor Goff is talking about happens to be Doncaster Hill, unless I'm mistaken. Um, so I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. It's it's a superfluous bit of work that we're asking our officers to do, which they're already doing it. So if they if they're going to have to um, do it twice, it makes no sense. So I, I just think it's a um, superfluous motion. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers for the motion? Are there any other speakers? Yes. Oh, your question, uh, Councillor Zaporopoulos. Yes. Uh, my question. Could you stand, please? Thank you. If you'd ask a question, yeah, thanks. It's very simple. Mm. Uh, given that we are undertaking that study, will that study incorporate the sort of issues that Councillor Goff raised? And how long do we expect before we see? not necessarily the results of the whole study, but could that become a priority of the study and start seeing the results of what uh, Councillor Goff asked at the early part of the study? Thank you, Councillor. I'll direct that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr Corumbus. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if that's what Council wishes, that certainly can be accommodated. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Um, are there any other speakers who'd like to speak to the motion? M Mr. Councillor Goff, would you like to close? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, I rise to say that this is different to a whole study of Doncaster Hill. This is specifically responding to com our community that are seeing a lot of buildings going up there. And the study of the amenity and the open space is not about necessarily about bringing in new things. It's about the timeline of when they are to be brought in. It's about examining uh, how long it will be until and whether we can make that happen a little bit faster. These are, if you were going to listen to our community, which I pride myself in doing, I hear the people saying to me, listen, it is full now, we can't get through, we haven't got the ability to get around here, what can we do? There's a, there's a turn around that area, there's some streets, there's some streets that we're going to be putting other roads into that need to be built. What are we going to do? When are we going to do it? In response to actually now, to our community, that we are putting the buildings in, because we've actually passed the motion uh, to have the building built, and we're going to have a lot more traffic movement through there, I think it's important that we really have a good look at what we're doing and review our timelines, perhaps. I'm not saying do a whole big study, because the, the next Doncaster Hill update is a much bigger piece of work. But if we look at the amenity, Madam Mayor, if you look at where all of these buildings are being built, the greatest percentage of the buildings are built in that little area. And that is what is causing the, the, the difficulties. The other one's on Tram Road, front onto Tram Road, that's true. And there are some around the back of Doncaster. But the real difficulty is occurring over that side where the buildings are going up. And, and the people can see that there are issues. And I think for council to sort of say to these people that are talking at these meetings, no, we're not even prepared to look at it, is not a way in which I would write to be a representative of council and I, I'm standing up to say that I'd like us to have some responses and to really look into that for these people. I'll be voting for that and calling a division after. Thank you. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? All those against? Motion carried. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Division. Yeah. In favour? Councillor Chen, Councillor Zaporopoulos, Councillor Haynes, Councillor Goff and Councillor Conlon. Against? Councillor McLeish, Councillor Kleinert, Councillor Galbally and Councillor Piccinini. Item 9.4. Planning application PLN 18 slash 0452 of 312 to 316 Springvale Road, Donvale, for the use and development of the land for a retirement village with associated facilities, basement car parking, three removal, uh, tree removal, including native vegetation and altered access to a road in a road zone category one. Do I have a mover? Councillor Conlon. 
I'd like to move that the recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Galbally. Would the mover like to speak? Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this, again, is a, a, is a good example of, of a, a good development for our city. And at the, I think the, at the, the other night, at the, the, the uh, submitters meeting had to be called off because there were no objectors, essentially, if I recall. Or is, it, is that right? <laughs> there have been a lot of submitters meetings and they're just getting a little bit... Uh, I just, just want to make sure I'm in the right spot. Objectors attending. No objectors attending. But if you look at the objected, objectors concerns, which I'd actually like to talk to, it's around traffic impacts and drainage. And I'd actually specifically like to draw your attention to page 207 of the Council papers, 6.78. Springvale Road is an arterial road with the current capacity to accommodate the additional vehicle movements associated with the development without compromise to its functioning. Noting its capacity will be further increased upon its widening. And it's to this point I would like to talk. Because Springvale Road is, is that section of Springvale Road between basically Reynolds Road and Mitcham Road is always meant to be multi-lane. It's single lane at the moment. We've already, uh, I think last council meeting we had objections around development on the corner of Old Warrandyte Road and Mitcham Road, and, and their issue is traffic. And because a lot of that traffic that is now getting stuck on Springvale Road, because it is a single lane, is getting diverted around, is going <coughs> right around uh, Old Warrandyte Road and then back on onto Mitcham Road and then down Springvale Road. It's a ridiculous. You've got three, three lanes going into one at that point. The old folks, the, uh, sorry, the <laughs> time <laughs> village. <laughs> Yes, probably not politically correct to say old folks, but I'm an old folk and I would love to live there, having been there. So uh, um, the retirement village on the corner of uh, Mitcham Road and Springvale Road has the same issue. There's, there is getting in and out of that in a single lane Springvale Road, which is absolutely packed, is packed for at least a kilometre down, um, down Springvale Road uh, in the mornings and it's... it's crazy trying to turn right into it or trying to um, turn left into it actually um, because of the angle of the road um, and so so what we have is a good development but I'm highlighting the issue the reason the, the objectors are objecting is because of the traffic on Springvale Road and that's not our responsibility this is a state government responsibility so I'm taking this opportunity to advocate that we need to do more, in, well, the state government needs to do more. And I'd call on Ryan Smith, who's a local member, to, to see what can be done, I'd, and all the other members of parliament who have neglected this, along with Vic Roads, for too long. We've got a $15, $16 billion North East Link going down the road here, and they can't make Springvale Road, which is the busiest road in Melbourne, I think, as mine does sound, it used to be until they put the North East Link in. Simon. Um, they, they, uh, they've gone three, three lanes all the way up to Mitcham Road and then, bang, stopped. And it's crazy. So I'd encourage councillors to take a drive down there. I'd encourage the public to start advocating and start getting, uh, making some noise around this because it can't go on forever. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? Uh, sure. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Conlon spoke a lot about Springvale Road and the problems with it and the fact that it is a state road and we can't actually, as a council, um, do the widening ourselves. But in, a, in anticipation um, of future widening, which I'm sure will happen eventually, um, and I confer with, um, concur with... Councillor Conlon, that um, I think we should um, up the ante with um, our advocacy towards that, and uh, especially with um, uh, the growth that they're expecting us to sort of provide in, in residency, especially in our low density areas, that we are going to need uh, better roads, and that one is woeful. Um, but going back to the actual development, I think it's uh, very much needed. 
I know a lot of residents um, within that area that are actually at the time of life where they do have to move out and um, move on to retirement homes. And it would be um, beneficial for them to sort of see that they can actually do so not very far from where they've lived. So I ask you all to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any speakers against the motion? Accordingly, I will... Oh. I wanted to just... Speak. Councillor Haynes. Do you, oh, add, oh, yes, of course. Councillor Haynes. Just to add to that, um, what my fellow councillors have said, can we also... Um, um, our local um, Transport Matters Party leader, Rod Barton, is our representative as well. So hopefully we can advocate to him as well. Be, um, I know that his paperwork says that he will act on behalf of Victorian taxi industry, but I'm hoping that he expands that to be Transport Matters in Manningham. Thank you. Are there any, any other speakers? Councillor McLeish. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, this is a great proposal. It's a 10,000 plus square metre site. It's a hectare in size. We're seeing, seeing multiple buildings proposed on the site, three building modules. They vary between two and three storeys only. Maximum height of 10.8 metres. It's a sympathetic development that's happening in the low density residential zone. Um, you might argue that um, it's going to be very difficult under the interpretation of the low density zone scheme to actually do any other developments of this scale further down Springvale Road. And it certainly won't be able to be done while the main road of Springvale Road remains undeveloped. But this particular proposal was a credible one. It does have its own slip lane. It does have all its own parking. It is an improvement, but when I joined my fellow councillor at the Pine Tree uh, Retirement Village the other day, the key thing the residents were telling me is it's next to impossible for them to get out of their driveway in peak hour. When you have a traffic jam down Springvale Road in morning peak and afternoon peak that extends all the way to Old Warrandyte Road, that's a distance of well over a kilometre, we have got a traffic problem on Springvale Road. And Vic Roads is not addressing this problem. They're not funding it, they're talking about it, but they're not actually doing anything about it. Yet when the residents of Pine Tree say, can we have a keep clear zone opposite our driveway so they have some chance of getting out of their driveway, Vic Roads' response is, oh, it's not needed. They're telling the elderly of our community, you can just keep on driving around the block. You don't really have to have any safe exit to you from your retirement village at the busy intersection right next door to Springvale and Mitcham Road. It's a farce, ladies and gentlemen. They are ignoring the ageing citizens in our community and failing to deliver for the citizens of Manningham. Some might suggest it's because of the politics. Perhaps our seat is just the wrong colour. Never mind. Let's see if we can get the government to do something about this. Most Melburnians would be astounded to hear that a portion of Springvale Road remains one lane in each direction, unmade curbs, no stormwater, no footpaths, land reservations there and not built. It is shameful. Sure. It's a massive traffic jam. It banks up all the way down Springvale Road every evening, all the way down to the freeway. It's a joke. They need to fix this and fix it on behalf of our community because it's our community paying the delay, paying the price of the delays in these traffic jams. We need this resolved on behalf of our community and I would ask that the, the, the CEO and the officers advocate to Vic Roads on behalf of the Pine Tree residents to address the clearway zone, uh, the keep clear zone, to address a proper bus waiting zone so they don't wait next to their driveway and block their view and stop them safely exiting the driveway and see what we can do on behalf of our community. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers? I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Nine point five planning application PLN eighteen slash O six eight seven at twenty one to twenty three Clay Drive, Doncaster, for the use and development of a three story building comprising fifteen dwellings and a childcare centre. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. Madam Mayor, I move that the, the commendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Haynes. Would the mover like to speak? 
Yes, Madam Mayor, I rise to speak to support our officer's recommendation to issue a notice of refusal in, in relation to this planning application. We all know that every application is assessed against the planning, uh, our local planning policy framework. In this application, provision of two, only two bedroom dwellings that fails to meet our housing diversity of the American planning scheme. And uh, the location is isolated from other non-residential uses and not located on a main road. Therefore, the traffic generated from the residential street will uh, firstly affect the amenity of the neighborhood. Also, the mix of the dwellings and tri-care center on the ground floor does not provide sensitive interface and it also affects the future residents' amenity. And also overlooking is an issue, and uh, the other issues is about the uh, unreasonable visual bulk uh, when consider the neighborhood character on uh, at Clay Drive. Also, the site coverage is, exceed, uh, is far, uh, ex exceeding the standard requirement of 60%, and mostly most importantly is about the mandatory garden area requirement is at least 35% and uh, unfortunately this application does not meet that requirement. So for many, many reasons, so I support the officer's recommendation to issue a refusal to this planning application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would the second I'd like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a couple of things I've been um, to all the meetings regarding this, and um, it, it definitely um, is a misuse building. If if it was, uh, if if the developer had have um, made a few changes, they may have got this through, and that was said at the meeting. And even the developer said at the, um, when he actually finally saw the refusal that he was prepared to make some um, changes and amendments. And um, during the uh, discussions over the many months. Um, uh, it hadn't happened. So um, I have a fear that this will get passed at VCAT um, and that he does do the amenity issues that Councillor um, Chen has mentioned. So um, there is, within the building and the things that she's mentioned, are the reasons I stand to support this refusal. And um, uh, it is a mixed-use facility and I'm just hoping that uh, they do make the changes needed if it was to get passed because otherwise um, we will end up with all units there and more parking and more street issues. Um, and I actually think um, a mixed-use building is, is a lot better than all of our just residential developments going up. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Are there any further speakers? Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This one's a beauty, Councillors. <laughs> It's a comprehensive report. I've just counted, there are, I think there are 29 not satisfied in the table of assessment of the report. I've never seen that many not satisfied in a report ever. Never. I've actually never seen a planning never. permit application come before council that's been demolished before the permit's been approved. <laughs> so it, this is quite remarkable, councillors, and I ask you to support the motion to refuse this particular application because it clearly just doesn't stack up in any way. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speakers? Accordingly, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Agenda item 10, City Planning and Community. 10.1, Waldo Precinct Master Plan. Do I have a mover? Councillor Haynes. I move that the recommendation be adopted with um, some oh, um, amendment. With a, with a small amendment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, councillors have the document in front of them. Um, so I would like to read um, the Part B uh, mm -hmm. amendment that I request. Is it, it starts off with endorse the revised Waldo Precinct Master Plan. And my addition is, and to commit to consultation with stakeholders on the scope and design of the facilities. Thank you. Do I have a mover to that? Motion. Bill and mover. I would be a seconder. Yeah. Oh, yes, a seconder. I mean a seconder. C Councillor Goff, you second that motion? Yeah. Well, uh, would the mover like to speak? 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I speak uh, for the uh, Waldo Precinct Plan. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how we continue to work with stakeholders of the future, as we have with a number of consultations and things that we've been doing throughout this, uh, when it went out on the 10th of December um, last year. And uh, I'm looking forward to us continuing the work for the Historical Society facilities um, is, is part of um, the concerns that I hear a lot around the community. Um, I know that um, the discussions have been quite lengthy over many years as we head for uh, trying to get um, some facilities that work for our community and help support our community. Uh, we have taken it many... Um, um, visits to the Schwerkholz Cottage Museum Complex in the past and I'm um, looking forward to um, seeing if we can make a Schramm's Cottage Museum Complex at our part of number two that we've got on that which we're at the moment calling a visitor centre. So I'm looking forward to us being able to move forward with the Historical Society on that issue with it but also the Waldo Precinct Master Plan also um, um, entails part of the park and also um, the Victoria Street area and changing the access uh, from where it is now to get to that historical society and the Scouts Hall. So I'm looking forward to us working with the community <coughs> to achieve many better outcomes for uh, our residents within that area. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? No, Madam Mayor. Are there, are there any movers against the motion? Councillor Chen? Madam Mayor. I wish to move a further amendment to Part C, please, if I may. Yes, so what, what would you like, how would you like to amend, seek to amend the motion, uh, Councillor yes, Chen? Yes, the Part C of the mm -hmm. recommendation amended to read Part C. Yep. Note that a separate report will be prepared dealing and expression of interest process for the development and operation of a cafe facility at the Victoria Street Playground and to commit to further public consultation <coughs> on the final design of the cafe as per the 11th December 2018 resolution of the council. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder to that amendment? Thank you, Councillor Zaporopoulos. Would the Councillor Chen, would you like to move to your motion? Would you like to speak to your motion? Point of order. Yeah. Madam Mayor, could you perhaps offer the mover of the original motion, the opportunity to exit. Yes, I could do that. That's a very good suggestion, yeah. Councillor McLeish. Um, Councillor Haynes, would you be happy to adopt that amendment, that proposed amendment? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I'm happy to add the um, extra part um, to the number to, C, yes. Yes. And the seconder, were you happy with that proposal as well, Councillor Goff? Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> Um, so that accordingly, becomes that becomes motion. part of your substantive Thank you. motion. Thank you. So are there any speakers against that substantive motion? Are there any speakers who'd like to speak to that substantive motion? Councillor Chen, would you like to speak to the substantive motion? Which includes your amendment. You may oh, like yes. to speak. Uh, yeah? just, uh, in regard to Part C, I just want to clarify this is a small amendment because it's already in paragraph uh, was uh, that was listed in page uh, 321, paragraph 3.50. To just to move, I just wish to just to move the paragraph into the recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, just to ensure that our community. <coughs> Council, uh, council uh, just to ensure our community that council is committed to public consultation, transparency, due process, <coughs> and good governance. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other speakers? Accordingly, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Ten point two, local government power purchasing agreement. Do I have a mover? Councillor Zaporopoulos. I'd like to move the recommendation. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor mm -hmm. Kleinert. Would the mover like to speak? Yes, Madam Mayor. This is uh, just uh, another example where council um, is demonstrating its willingness to collaborate with other councils in order to achieve a collective benefit. 
so this project has been going on for a while. 39 councils got together and basically uh, uh, play the role of the energy retailers who, which contract electricity from an, an, an electricity generator. So that uh, uh, way we will be able to achieve a number of benefits. One of, one of them is that we will reduce greenhouse emissions which will benefit not only Manicum but all the other councils. Uh, we uh, will also reduce electricity costs. Uh, we have done the calculations. Uh, we had uh, 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 someone, uh, energy consultants, uh, do the business case, and Manicum uh, hired uh, an independent consultant to uh, make sure that uh, Manicum's particular uh, case uh, is taken fully into account. Now, uh, this uh, motion also gives the delegation to the CEO to determine the proportion that we ought to purchase if we go ahead with that sort of thing. Um, but I would like to point out here that uh, I'm uh, of the view that the greater the, pro the proportion, the better. The City of Melbourne, the City of Yarra have already demonstrated they're going for 100%. Uh, however, I'll leave that to the CEO to uh, determine on the basis of uh, the advice uh, that we get. So that's basically it. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? Are there any speakers against the motion? Are there any further speakers? Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, this is a particularly important matter for our city. It doesn't seem like it when you're talking about local government power purchasing agreement. But uh, it is, because it's part of us as a council taking action on climate change, because we have some obligations to our community to represent them effectively to take the action that we can take. Individuals must take their own action, organisations must take theirs, and we as a rep community's representatives in this organisation must do what is necessary to deliver on our goals. We have very modest goals, Madam Mayor, our goal is to reduce our emissions by 20% below the 2009 levels by the year 2020. Pretty modest outcome. We've only achieved 13%, however. And this is one means by which we might actually achieve our 20% goal. And I'll put that in the context. We have UK that it's already cut their emissions by 25%. They've set a goal, a goal, mind you, of 30, an interim target of 34% cut by 2020. It's legally binding having passed their budget. The UK has set an 80% cut by 2050. That's law as part of the Climate Change Act in 2008. Our own government, wow, they're really kicking goals, aren't they? 25% by 2030, wow. <laughs> really out there on the limb. Well, we can't fix our government's policies but maybe we, the government could learn something from the way the UK do it. They've got an independent committee on climate change, independent statutory body. It's providing advice to parliament. It drafted the Climate Change Act. It set those goals in conjunction with parliament. Parliament has made the moves. We can't make our own government get their act together. We can do a little bit in our community. We should be taking this particular opportunity to purchase renewable energy, in the same way that councils like the City of Melbourne have done, to try and do our bit to make sure we achieve goals. And most importantly, we need to set some new goals for this city which are even more aggressive so that we attack the fundamental issue, lowering emissions, becoming any more energy efficient, switching to low carbon fuels and doing what we can on behalf of our community as a city. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other speakers? Yes, Councillor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, I support that we actually go and empower the uh, CEO to go into negotiations with this thing. Uh, local government does have, as a combined body, a very, very good purchasing power, and uh, it, if we can, it, we can reap benefits out of that. Um, there's a little proviso in that uh, we are in rate capping and everything else, and I, I do believe that this will and I'm confident that the, the uh, CEO will, will make some 
good decisions on our behalf. But there are not danger signs, but there are some things that I believe are important for our community. And that is the cost of in the dollar value of what that electricity is going to cost. And, and if you don't know what the cost is before you put your percentages in, I find that that is a very difficult thing to assess if you don't know the final outcoming cost in dollar terms to make a comparison. But I'm sure that our CEO will be able to work through those sorts of things, and I'm confident we can do that. And the other hard issue in something like this is a 10-year timeline, because you don't know what happens in markets and everything else over a 10-year period and tying yourself into 10-year periods. Um, now, it, it probably won't occur, and I'm in fully supporting us going through all of this, and it would be wonderful uh, if, if we can get it through, but you know, it need, the, the cost effectiveness needs to be there, or if it's not, we need to know what the, the difference is very clearly and how you make that in a percentage that you have to give beforehand I don't know, but that may, that may be able to be worked through. But the 10-year line is, a, is another difficult one. There are lots of governments and people with good, good uh, hearts and good minds to want to do the right thing. And you don't, you don't have to go back far where you cast your mind back to getting people into houses about 25 years ago. And uh, the government put out some of these, uh, what were at the time, low-cost loans around the 10% mark. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, the current rate at the time was 12%, 13% and people, you know, got into all of these uh, situations, purchased properties, and all of a sudden the, uh, the rate goes down to 5 6%, 7%, and they were paying over the, over the bar and it was unfinancial in the end. So I think there are things that I'm sure our CEO will work through, but I'm quite excited about this all uh, coming through. So, uh, good. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Galbally. Oh, I wasn't going to speak, but um, it, this is a good example of how um, councils are more and more left to pick up the pieces and make the big changes on big item subjects like climate change that other governments um, like state and federal refuse to um, step up and be um, proactive with. So um, that is... Uh, I, I really believe that at our... Um, council level, that we can actually join forces with the other councils that we are doing and, um, and I entrust um, our CEO to make the right decisions on the economic basis that uh, Gen, uh, council, I was going to call you General Goff, <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Councillor Goff. <laughs> General Jeff. <Jeff's laughs> <right. laughs> um, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, uh, and I, I also would love to see 100%, but it all depends on how the dollars stack up and and the affordability of it. So, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other speakers? Just one Councillor clarification. Haynes. Um, I know that we're putting this in you the You have hands a question? Is that...? Yes. Oh, OK, OK. So, yep. I know we're putting this in the hands of the CEO, which I'm very happy about, um, but he will be coming to us. He's not just taking it on and not having discussions with us. It'll be something that we're taking along the journey with. Is that correct? I'll, I will direct that question to the CEO, Mr Day. That's correct, Councillor. So there'll be a number of gateways that we've got to pass through, and this first one is to determine the percentage, and then um, we'll be coming back to Council with more information. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Accordingly, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Um, item number 11, City Services. There are no City Services reports. Item number 12, Shared Services. There are no Shared Services reports. Item number 13, Chief Executive Officer. 13.1, Manningham Quarterly Report, Quarter 3, January to March 2019. Do I have a mover? Councillor Haynes? I move that the recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kleinert, would the mover like to speak? Uh, no, Madam Mayor, um, just to say that it's a, a very detailed, concise report, as always, and as we have one every quarter, I'm looking forward to, um, to having people, if they have a feedback on it, um, sharing that with me uh, through the community. Thank you. Would the seconder like to speak? Uh, just very quickly, Madam Mayor. Um, 
very good report. We're, uh, we're doing, I think, very well with a 130.6 kilometres of road resealing having been done, SES building extension, which is very important, being done. 13 of the 14 uh, major initiatives are on track. So I think overall a commendable report. Well done. Thank you. Are there any speakers against the motion? Any other speakers? Accordingly, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item 13.2, documents for sealing. Do I have a mover? Councillor Conlon. I'd like to move that the recommendation be adopted with the addition of the following document. Lease, Council and Park Orchards Community House and Learning Centre, Incorporated, Part 802 to 804, Doncaster Road, Doncaster. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Goff. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. 13.3, Record of Assembly of Councillors. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kleinert. That the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Zaporopoulos. I'll put the motion. Motion carried. <laughs> Would you like to speak, actually? Well, not anymore. Okay. No. no. Okay. Sorry. I, I, got, I got ahead of myself there. She was living in hope. It's been a long <laughs> night. But we are now up to item 14, of which we have two items of urgent business. The first one, 14.1 Suburban Rail Loop Advocacy. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. Madam Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted. I need to read the info. No, um, I don't think so. I, Thank it you. has been distributed, so it doesn't need to be read in full. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Zaporopoulos, would the mover like to speak? Yes, I do. Madam Mayor, for many years, Manhattan City Council has been advocating on behalf of our community for a rail link to Doncaster Hill and beyond. Because Manhattan is the only Melbourne metropolitan municipality without train or train services. It has an adverse effect on all of us. Our resident lack of adequate public transport, access to jobs, educational and health facilities, and to other community and social services. After many years of advocacy by council, our DART bus, uh, bus services are improving. But overcrowding <laughs> during, business, uh, during peak hours is always an issue. Bus service reliability and connectivity still need the attention of our state government. This is why the Suburban Rail Loop announced in August last year, including Doncaster in the project, is welcomed in our community. Madam Mayor, it is very disappointing that a recent premier media release that published on the 16th of May 2019, appears to exclude Doncaster in phase one of the project. A rail line in Doncaster has had a long history of being proposed and then not followed. Because in the past, the Doncaster corridor was perceived not a traditional rail corridor with clear centers and high density housing. But today, our city is growing rapidly. Between 2016 and 2036, the population of the city of Manningham is forecast to increase by, well, more than 26,000 persons. That is roughly about 21-45% growth. Especially our Doncaster Hill faces inner city levels of congestion. Its population expected to rise to more than 11,000 people by 2031 and an influx of millions of visitors per year. Three out of four of our workforce work outside of Manhattan, with one in five works in the CBD. Manhattan City Council has a vision for our city. Manhattan needs a rail line not only to respond to our demonstrated demand, but 
to shape our city. Doncaster Hill is an opportunity to showcase an integrated land use planning and development framework. The community of Manningham has the opportunity to become a key stakeholder in the development of Australia's first sustainable and smart urban village. We need visionary politicians to assist us in delivering our vision sooner rather than late. Therefore, I ask my fellow councillor support to this motion and ask the ministers and the premier to intervene to include Doncaster in phase one of the project, to provide our community public transport connection to employment, health, and other services to Melbourne's southeast. A rail connection between Doncaster and Box Hill can also provide an alternative <coughs> to, for residents of busy Doncaster Hill area to travel to the CBD. Of course, an additional bullying station will serve the region with, which generally lack public transport services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? Oh, just a couple of words. Uh, I think uh, Councillor Chen summarised uh, well the rationale of this motion. I'm attracted to this motion simply because uh, despite the fact that uh, we are the only municipality with, uh, without railway, um, or, or we had a very strong advocacy in past years, which died out. I don't hear much about uh, in the papers or anywhere else uh, about train, and uh, people settled to the idea that we will manage our transport needs uh, using the bus network. This motion brings the, the train back into the forefront and I think we should keep reminding uh, the state government that we haven't given up on trains. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? No, didn't think so. Are there any further speakers? I can... Councillor Conlon put his hand up first, so Councillor Conlon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you uh, to Councillor Chen for putting this motion up, actually. Uh, when we initially heard about this, the excuse for stopping at Box Hill, and I think this is still the excuse, is that it's really difficult to go from Box Hill to Doncaster. If that is the reason, then they might as well forget ring rail. Like, it's just not going to work. So, to me, uh, part of our emphasis should be on you have to sort out that link, because this is, will be the hardest link between Box Hill and Doncaster. And if they don't sort that out in the initial planning, which is what we're asking for, <coughs> then you'll never get a ring road north of Vox Hill. A oh, ring rail, sorry, ring rail. Yeah. So, so I just I hope that our officers can take that on board uh, if this goes ahead, and we can make these points very clear about um, being involved in that first stage. It is absolutely critical. Thank you. And I'll take that, I'll, I'll just put on my engineering hat for one tick and say, you have to design for the future and you have to understand what, you, what you're getting into before you go in uh, and before they get involved. So the state government is a part of their responsibility in terms of um, good governance and making sure that they're doing their due diligence is to make sure that they can actually do that link and what that link looks like. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Haynes. Madam Mayor, as someone that does not fully support or uh, understand how we could get rail to Doncaster in the past, I am very aware that they can build it in tunnels. They're doing it all over the place. So I do support a tunnel from Box Hill through to Heidelberg and, um, and a station underground somewhere on the hill. But I also ask that um, I'll probably be dead and buried way before this is considered. So is it possible that we don't not only continue to advocate for this, but we also consider asking for the tram to come up Doncaster Road, as it has been said many times that that isn't possible because of the... Um, because of the slope, and it has been proven that that's not true. So I'm also asking if we're going to be advocating for the engineering issues that we have here in Manningham with our hill and our rail, 
that we also ask for some other solutions as well from um, Doncaster Road for our trams and, you know, wouldn't it be nice for Tram Road to be a tram road once again? Thank you. Are there any further speakers? Accordingly, I will put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Fourteen point two: Appointment of Authorised Officer, Planning and Environmental Act, nineteen eighty seven. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kleinert. The recommendation be adopted. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Galbally. Would the mover like to speak this time? No. Would the seconder like to speak? Accordingly, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. <coughs> Item number 15, councillor question time. Do any councillors have a question? Councillor Goff. Madam Mayor, I have a, a number of questions. Uh, my first question is, uh, are you aware that last night at an open space and streetscape committee meeting, uh, there was a motion passed that uh, supported active sports grounds and uses to be incorporated into any land developed along Temple, uh, Templestowe Road, so the offsets basically in the areas of, of the uh, Bulleen River Precinct area, that offsets and that uh, allow, um, they, they, they're saying that active sports and things be allowed in there. Mm -hmm. and, and not only the sports themselves, but the related infrastructure that is required to be built in those areas. And, uh, and, and, and part two of that, I suppose, is that, you know, are you aware that uh, Daniel Andrews was elected uh, to government with the slogan of putting people first? And my question is, what are we doing to ensure that Daniel Andrews and the state government Give us back all the developable land we now need to ensure that we can provide for the needs of the AFL and soccer and other sporting facilities now and into the future on sites like the drive-in range and the Klaus Seed site and other sites along the offsets and things. So, um, Thank you, Councillor. I'll direct that question to the CEO, Mr Day. Thank you, Councillor. No, I wasn't aware um, that that issue was raised last night, but obviously it's something that's very much in line with um, Council's views in terms of uh, the desires as it relates to the Yarra River Corridor and Council's adopted Yarra River Corridor concept plan, uh, and in certainly in terms of um, putting Manningham people first, Council will be obviously um, representing um, a range of different views, including the sports needs um, of our community as a result of the impacts of the North East Link um, um, project on our municipality in a detailed um, submission to the environmental effects statement due on the 7th of June. And I'll take this opportunity um, to highlight that Council have a um, community forum on tomorrow night here at the council chamber at 6.30, I think it's 6.30, um, and would obviously invite community members to come along and express those um, desires directly to councillors and officers and obviously encourage community members to put in a submission. Thank you, Mr Day. Any further questions? Yes, Madam Mayor. And my second question is, are you aware of a VCAT determination that has recently been given to us? And it's a determination of 196 to 198 Surples Road in Templestowe for a 130 uh, childcare facility in a low density residential area. This was a hotly debated and tightly fought uh, motion here at Council and it was passed at Council to approve that development. It has subsequently gone off to VCAT and uh, indeed um, there has been a refusal from the officer of VCAT and uh, it, uh, if I can just read one section, however, when assessing the proposal use against the policy framework in its context at Manningham, on balance, the use for a childcare centre was not supported. Now, I'm wondering, and my question is this, um, 
I'm wondering if we can have a meeting and a, a, a report and a discussion from council officers to us on how we can utilise that finding to firm up our position on the non-urban, uh, the LDRZ and what can and can't be built in that particular area uh, and are there opportunities to use this particular VCAT finding to strengthen our policies on that because indeed it is a, as you are, I don't know whether you are aware, it's a growing issue of creep of use because there's nothing stopping a 7-Eleven being built in Surface Road and other sorts of things with permits. So it was a wonderful uh, determination from the officer and uh, the community there I'm sure are extremely ecstatic about this fact. Uh, but, uh, and I urge any council that hasn't read the, uh, the uh, VCAT determination to actually get the full uh, VCAT determination and have a read through. Yes, Councillor Goff, it was an excellent result. Um, and I'll direct your question um, hasn't such a report already been requested by another councillor in exactly those terms for exactly that purpose, as all councillors are aware, given they're all emailed to that effect by the councillor who requested the report? I just don't understand the point of this question, given it's already happening. Okay. So, all right. So, Councillor Zapropoulos, you wish to make a comment? No, no. I no? Mean, I, I, I've, I've dealt on this issue with the officers. Could you stand, please? And I've, got a, uh, and if I've got a report and I've got a comparison why was that rejected and another one it wasn't? Yeah. Okay, well I will nevertheless direct the question, because it is a question made at a public council meeting to Mr Day, our CEO. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just in response to the direct question, um, obviously we are aware of that um, particular decision and um, have created and um, provided some uh, information in relation to that already, but obviously we're prepared to um, provide councillors with um, all of that information um, and the opportunities and implications of that particular finding. Had a discussion amongst councillors. Bring it to uh, an SBS councillor to have a discussion. Thank you. Excellent. So, are there any other questions from councillors? Councillor Haynes. Madam Mayor, um, as I said at the start of the meeting, I've had a resident ask me to do a two minute preamble, and I've got his words. And he's a MDN fighter and he's part of the Danaher group that are um, trying to get results for motor neuron disease. He sent through an email to councillors and he was asked to come and speak here and I was very fortunate that um, I, um, I've now been asked by him to just read out his two minute words please and then his little question if that's okay. Okay, so he, his words are, I live in Bulleen, I have lived here for 45 years, I am contacting all local members as I am very disappointed at the way we have been treated. As often we are asked for input and nothing happens. In the budget papers released last week, obviously he wrote this before today, in reference to the Kuno <coughs> Creek Linear Park Management Plan, this plan was produced with 97 pages in March 2011. After many public meetings and an enormous amount of work by the Council, this report was in detail with costings and recommendations. An agreement was endorsed back in 2005 with Vic Roads, and this came about after consulting with Council, residents, park users, Vic Roads, Melbourne Water, Bicycle Victoria, Baronia Council, Whitehorse Council, Friends of Manningham Dogs and Cats, and Scouts Associations. The project was divided into three stages, but so far we see little work done. Part two of his question is um, not, yeah, part two of his um, writing is the Harold Link development is another project that has seen nothing happen and on the budget papers it is listed for 2021-2022, see page 62. This plan has 253 signatures and 73 written submissions and was finalised in 2015, but again it must wait. It appears much work has been done to get plans that are very happy with local residents have their say, but nothing happens. His question is, can we bring these two projects forward so they can get started very soon to this current budget and make this a priority. And oh. I've got his name, address and phone number. Okay. I, I, I take it that you endorse that question and you're asking that question in your, in your capacity as a councillor because it is during question time. And I will direct it to our CEO, Mr Day. Um, 
Thank you, Councillor. My understanding is that um, that is a budget submission and we'll ensure that um, that particular gentleman's um, questions and proposals are considered as part of the budget process um, and um, will be a part of the papers that come forward to Council on Thursday night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr Senior. I will hand that back to you now. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Are there any further questions? Councillor Chen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have the impression, just correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, that this, this gentleman did write to some of the councillors and that has been submitted in, to be included in the sub, uh, budget submission process. Thank and you. I believe that that has been included. Oh, and there's photos too that I'll be leaving in the council's lane. Okay, so yes, so in relation to your question, I'm, there's nods everywhere. So yes, that is correct, Aunt Councillor Chen. Do you have a further question? Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. And recently there are two urgent business. One is a, a move by Councillor McLeish regarding uh, just asking uh, uh, ministers intervene to about the removal of bus lane on Fitz Simon's land. And tonight we have another motion and just uh, ask the ministers to intervene about the suburban rail loop uh, uh, project. To ensure, hopefully we, they can include Don Castle in phase one. And because council also are members of ETC, MTF, ERG, and they are also very engaging in advocacy for transport issues and on behalf of their members. And I, I'm just wondering whether we, are, we can just provide the copies of the minutes to those three uh, organisations and that to be included and just ask the support from those organisations. Thank you. Thank you. So you're, you're seeking that copies of the minutes from those three organisations? The letters or uh, minutes or perhaps the letters and to, be in, uh, to send it to those three organisations, the chairperson. Oh, yes. Okay. And then, yeah, and then they uh, and ask their support yep. to our... Uh, uh, all right. Yes. I'll, I'll direct that question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. I'll direct that question to our CEO, Mr Day. Thank you, Councillor. We can certainly forward on any relevant um, letters um, and information onto each of those bodies. And obviously, there's an opportunity there for the Councillor representatives um, to, to highlight that, because generally those meetings provide an opportunity to give an update. So certainly encourage um, the representatives to raise it when they are given that opportunity to provide a Manningham update. Thank you. Any further questions? As there's no further questions, I'm going to move to item 16, which is confidential reports. Do I have a mover? Councillor Kleinert. That council closed the meeting to the public's persuadent to sections 89-2C and H of the Local Government Act 2000 and, uh, sorry, 9, 1989 to consider item 16.1 concerning industrial matters and any other matters which the council or special committee considers would prejudice the council or any person. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Conlon. All those in favour? Motion carried. Yeah. 